as of right now. Oh. There ain't no rest for the wicked. Money don't grow on trees. I got bills to pay. I got mouths to feed. There ain't nothing in this world for free. I oh, know I can't slow down. I can't hold back. Though you know I wish I could. I know there ain't no rest for the wicked. Until we close our eyes for good. All right, that's, that's, that'll work for an intro for, song now, yeah. for this week. I mean, you know, we'll play it again at the outro. Let me cue that up for the end there. Okay. Okay, sweet and hot. Baby Jesus, love to all the people out there in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Straight Reverend. I am Reverend Mitch, or Mitch Marzoni. Again, still on the fence on that one. Off to my left side of my head is my co-host, Justin Dubois. Say howdy. Howdy. And off to my right is Brian Monarch. What up? A, uh, a savior of the uh, SoCal comedy scene, helping uh, <laughs> comedians who can otherwise not get gigs get gigs yes. at places that they would otherwise never even have the money to uh, attend a show at. Is that how people look at it? I have no idea. That's oh. how I look at it. That's good. That's a positive, positive thing. <laughs> <laughs> the Godfather. Well, let's see. You got. Let's see. You got the Lovitz Club. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I'll, I'll see if I can go in the order of like jumping off point. And I haven't done all of them, so uh, let me see if I, I'm going to see if I've got, as far as like importance, audience participate, or audi- audience, um, what do you want to say, filling out, whatever. Uh, let's say LA Pizza. That's where it started. Right. And then M Bar is one up from that, I imagine. Yeah. And now I'm going to go ahead and say Love It's then Improv. I don't know that I would put the Improv higher than Love It's yet. I mean, lower than Love It's. What about Comedy Store Main Room? Uh-huh. Ooh, I didn't know you booked that one too. Yeah, that was uh, that was the one. I'll with still Bobby put Lee. that just below Improv. I prefer Improv over all the others. Yeah, Improv is great. They, uh, it's quite the corporate machine over there. Uh, did I tell you I got bumped off my own Improv show? No, you did not. You want to tell us that story? Who oh. bumped you? The management. No, I mean like what comic? Just the management. So we get down there and. <laughs> Do you want to hear from the beginning? Yeah, I mean, look, man, we got two hours. It's cool. Oh, okay, let me tell you this story. I was, <laughs> I had two comics. You know, at the improv, you could book like two or three right. and a headliner, and then they fill the rest of the show up. They yep. don't, you know, they want to make sure everything is high yeah, quality. Yeah. yeah. So I send them a list. I, I, I have Ocean headlining. I got Eliza Schlesinger, me, and then another comic. It's a then, pretty good lineup. Yeah, and then yeah. one more comic. So I was like, look. This is, she goes, tell me what you want, and we'll try to make it happen. Okay. So I said, I'd like this guy to do 6 to 7, this guy to do 6 to 7, me 10 to 12, and Ocean 20, or 25. How much was Eliza getting? Oh, yeah, and 15 for Eliza. Okay, I was like... <laughs> yeah, so it comes okay. back. All right. It comes back. She gave the first three eight, meaning the guy I asked for 6 to 7, right, the guy right. I asked for 6 to 7, <laughs> yeah. and me. Oh, wow. So, yeah, now okay. I'm... <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, well, this is the like, math works out almost. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah, it's not fair, but it's it's still the math works out. Okay, so so I called her and I was like, um, these guys are like basically, you know, they don't want to do longer sets. They didn't like this was like right. people I usually have it up and comers or something or somebody we're giving a gift spot to. I go, I really want to give them six to seven. Can you just make each of them seven? Take a minute off each of them and add two minutes to me and make me ten. Right. So they are like. They email me back two days later, and it says, okay, we'll do it, but here's the new lineup. And now I'm right before the headliner. Before I was third, you know, right, it was like right, right prime position, yeah. you know. But you want to, you know, do whatever you, who cares when you're going up, as long as you're going up, right? Yeah, sure. So I'm like, cool, awesome. Um, we get there. This guy named Sugar Sammy. Never heard of him. He's on our lineup. Okay. I don't, that this guy, name doesn't ring a bell. This guy ran the light by like, it felt like if we gave him 10, he was doing 17 or 18. <laughs> like, this thing is just going. Like, he's just ignoring They it. don't cut the mic. I thought they cut the mic after like a minute or two over the light, unless you're killing and you're a big fucking headliner. You, I mean, that's what my didn't. understanding was. I was always told that. I've never run the light at the improv. They didn't kill it. Okay. Wow. But um, they kept it going. And then um, everyone was pissed. Ocean just got in that guy's face. You know, he was headlining and... Um, next thing I know, he's like, the management's like, we're probably going to have to cut you off your own show. Your promo- promoter goes first. And I was just thinking, if I would have just kept that eight minutes at spot three, and that, that place, we filled it up, dude, to the back wall, sides, nice, and nice. everything. And I was watching Eliza. She was third, and she's hilarious. But 
she, I mean, this room was just exploding, dude. And I was like, I would give. And my mom was there. Let's not forget, my mother came. Oh, yeah, that's sweet. I was so. Oh yeah. Then Todd Glass wanted to do some time. That's, oh. what, that's what sealed the deal. <laughs> Lucky. That's it. What, yeah, it's like I would have given him the whole stage. I've been like, Todd, you can have a ball. Yeah, well, he got up there, and then he, he was pissed because these chicks were talking in the crowd, oh, and he yeah. started this huge thing, and he got up early. Did you not just see the video I just put I know, on? right? Like, <laughs> Todd Glass doesn't... Yeah, he's got that intro video at the improv. He's like, turn off your fucking cell phone. Uh, enjoy the fucking show. Yeah. Nobody ca- nobody's ever gotten kicked out of a comedy club for laughing too loud. Laughing is fine, but talking... The fucking, fucking, the, you know, yeah, and he does yeah, that yeah. whole thing. I can't believe I remember that fucking video. Like the, uh... But yeah, he's 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 fucking killer, and uh, I heard he did a uh, a bit once, a, a whole show once actually, where he went up there dressed as a cop, and he was pretending to be a cop doing his first night of stand up, and every time people would laugh, he'd hold his hand up and check his CB. <laughs> he'd be like, <laughs> I "Wonder if that's on YouTube." Yeah, ten four, and then he would just go right back into it, totally stone face. I wish I would have seen that. That sounds uh, sounds funny. pretty incredible. Uh, now Eliza. I've heard her on a number of uh, podcasts. I'm a bit of a podcast freak. Uh, it it it's strange to me because it seems like anybody anytime somebody brings up like a perverted perverted joke around her on these interviews, she kind of goes ew, and I'm like, I mean, you know, it doesn't it doesn't vibe with the her her stand up is is well not quite as dirty as mine, but it's still. I mean, she has some sex jokes. She has a whole bit about doggy style sex, which I thought that was good. Yeah. It's very clever. I think a lot of females just have that in them. Like, if somebody says something, you have to let them know that, especially if you're a, a alpha female like that, you probably want to let them know, like, you just said something inappropriate. I'm going to tell you my own way. Right, right. Let them know how it well, works. Well, I have to, we had to get some female comics on here and kind of contrast and compare. I want to get uh, Marion Bruno. I want to see how she... <laughs> oh, I know why you want to bring her on. <laughs> Get her in the apartment. No. Um, she going to wear those hot pants again? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, she. the last time I saw her, she did really well. She did like, she did like five minutes about pubic hair, which I thought yeah. was like... It was just ironic that the spotlight was on her crotch. No, that was a different one. That was oh. a different show. Unless she also did it. I, I, didn't, didn't, I didn't hear it there. <laughs> I heard it like at the uh, at Flappers. You do, any, you do any shows at Flappers? Um, I helped once, but I wasn't really... No. Yeah, it's not the it's most. A, it's a it's a great club, but yeah. it smells like a wet dog. Like Does it? Every time I go in there, <laughs> I like can't get that smell out of my head for like two days after I go there. And I know comics that practically live there, like it's the new improv. Yeah, and I'm just like, how do you get the smell like out of your fucking skull? And they're like, what smell? I'm like, okay, you've been here too long. Yeah. That is the official sign that when you've been I, here too long. When I go in that place, I do notice a unique smell. I just never labeled it as a wet dog. Wet dog. Now oh, when now I go in there, there yeah. I'm gonna be like. Great, thanks. Yeah, thanks, Mitch. Mitch. Wet fucking dog now, asshole. I, uh, I have a question. Okay. This whole MIT CZ thing, is that, <laughs> <laughs> is that on your birth certificate? Because no, I'm going to tell you no. something. We talked online a lot before we actually talked yeah, yeah. on a phone or in person. Yeah. And I, in my mind, whenever I think of you, I think Mitz. Yeah, I it just happens. Rev Mitz. I have a very, uh, I have a very interesting story about that later. All right. I, I can't wait to get to it. It's my, my, my highlight of the day. I might have even um, called you up when you headlined LA Pizza as Rev Mitz. I don't even. I remember. think you may have. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's all right. It's just, just the it, the Rev bothers me more. It's oh, like really? It's Reverend. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I, I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of on the thing. Like I don't I won't drop the weird spelling, of Mitch, because uh, right, right. Google loves me that way. Um, every you know five letters, everything I've ever done, and I feel like that's good. You know, it's like I, I keep yelling at TK. Like I was I was sitting there I'm like, what, how many websites you have? Do you have any profiles? Like it's impossible to find you because TK is not much of a search term. <laughs> right. You know, just you know, I was like TK Madison. No, I just TK. I'm like, but shouldn't you just put your last name? I'm TK. I just want people to know me as TK. I'm like. Okay, but Google hates you. you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, Google loves me for that. Um, well, the problem is you works. put, you know, your website's RevMit, so that's what you're going to be known as, dude. Yeah, yeah, well. It's like Rev Run. From oh, what am I going to write? Reverend Mitch? I also have Reverend Mitch with an H and a Z dot com. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I have uh, like 100 domains, but, you know, just in case. But, uh, yeah, you know, I, I don't know if I'm going to drop the Reverend thing. I might just go by Mitch or Mitch Marzoni. It'd yeah. be nice to just be one single name. That's not a one name boy. Then they'll stop asking you to do weddings. Yeah, bastards. Um, I was going to ask you. Yep. Um, how did how did this come to be? All this SoCal stand up stuff, and you and you're starting uh-huh. to do all these sites and and putting together your shows. How how does one get into that? Let's I have see. no interest in doing it. I'm just out of curiosity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see. I started off 
I started doing comedy like in 1988. Whoa! Actually. No, yeah. And then I uh, <laughs> used to open for Bill Hicks. <laughs> no, I, I there was I would do the open mic at the Laugh Factory, you know, and wow. like Dane Cook was closing, and they had like uh, Bob Marley and stuff back then. In '88, Dane Cook was closing. Yeah, he was. Well, that always surprises me to find out how long people were like yeah. top of their game. Yeah. You know, this 10, 15 been, years before they like anybody even puts them on TV. I think I started in 89. I was doing that. It might have been 90, 91. But it was. It well, was I feel like there. he started blowing up in like 99. Right, like yeah, 2000 yeah. was like when I started hearing about it more and more. I think I saw his first special in like 2000 or 2001. So. Yeah. Maybe it was longer than I thought. But I mean, I don't know. Anyway. Anyways. Um, and I stopped for many, many years because. Uh, I had this bur- bridge that I burned that I'm, and uh, it was just hard to find comedy shows back then. There was no yeah, Facebook yeah. or MySpace. So, like, what are you going to do? Look in LA Weekly and it's not, yeah, it was, yeah, just yeah. Not, it was just hard to really find time. Yeah, and uh, I didn't want to start doing open mics again. I stopped for like I don't know how long, like eight or nine years, and then I wanted to start up again. And I was like, uh, my buddy owned LA Pizza at the time, um, George, and I was like, dude, what if we start a show? On you know just like a, like kind of like an open mic and you know you'll make some extra money selling pizzas and you know I'll get to have stage time every week and we'll start something yeah yeah and he's like okay all right let, let's do it and I was like well how do I get all these comics together and I'm like well I could start a website with like a user list and so this is like two years ago three years ago huh? three years that? ago yeah yes yeah, right. yeah. so, and I, I figured like oh I have forum boards and I was like what would be a good name and. All the good ones were taken, and I got SoCalStandUp dot com. Yeah, it works. Yeah, I thought for long as that was social stand up. You know, and I was like, time. "Do you know anything outside of SoCal?" And you were like, "No, because the site is SoCal Stand Up." And I was like, <laughs> "Of course it is." That's, uh, <laughs> I knew that. I was just of course. I'm, I'm just saying. I was curious. You know, if yeah. maybe it was so calamari, <laughs> Cal- yeah, Cal- Caligula, <laughs> Southern Caligula. No, that'd probably be the w- worst place to do comedy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you can go suck a hundred cocks or <laughs> suck a hundred cocks in hell. All right, you want me to get to my my story? I'd buy that for a dollar. I certainly would. <laughs> I'd buy that for a dollar. There you go. All right, so I have to get into my story. Before I do, I will play a teaser clip. Uh. See if you can. Justin R knows who this is. See if you can recognize this voice talking about me. I don't like the aggressive piercings Seems of like Mitch it. and the crazy spelling of the name either. <laughs> <laughs> of course I know who it is. Adam Carolla. There you go. That was Adam Carolla on uh, today's pod or last night's podcast. Um, so uh, this is how this is what happened. <clears throat> You're going to explain how he knows you and how he met no, you? No, no, he doesn't. He doesn't know me by any means. Was he talking I about I wish you? I was that cool. Yeah, he was. He was definitely talking about me. Who else were you talking about with the aggressive piercings? He actually says it twice. Aggressive piercings. <laughs> <laughs> I think... Uh, and then his news girl mentioned me. I can't be with someone who spells her name that way. <laughs> and uh, so it was a lot of... Uh, how did they get directed to you? Uh... Well, that's, what, that's the story. Oh, okay. Okay. So let me see if I've got... Oh. Would you pronounce that Mitch? <laughs> Sorry, I'm just so amused that I have clips of Adam Carolla talking about me. I'm glad I brought up the whole Mitch thing earlier. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was. This was in. This show was not gonna no, go I, through I, without me telling this crazy story. But yeah, yeah. So uh, I should probably play that whenever anybody asks. I should just. Uh, uh, Would you pronounce that Mitch? <laughs> uh, okay. So what happened? I'm trying to think of how how to phrase this right. Um, Okay, so as it turns, like I, I don't, you you've known me for a while, Justin. I don't, yeah. I don't walk around trying to, you know, uh, with um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, Clothes. No, I don't. That oh. that sometimes only okay. only when I'm drunk. Um, it's uh, I don't know. There's a word for it. I, I don't walk around going like, hey, I'm really weird. Look at me, I'm weird. Mm. I don't, I don't play up being weird i don't mm-hmm. you know what i mean as far as i'm concerned i'm perfectly normal and um, you do this for the chicks yeah yeah it's for the chicks it's uh it's a litmus test for freaky bitches that's, that's really what, what it comes do. out to you know it's like uh they like piercings and mohawks uh, you know those are my kind of girls and if you don't have that somehow you just stare and be like i used to and i don't want to so but whatever I, I like the way it looks but i don't I don't otherwise like I don't consider myself particularly strange or weird. I don't I don't have like affectations is the word I was looking for. I don't have like affectations where it's like, look at this crazy thing I do. I wear bowling shoes or you know, some kind of fucked up 
you know, I dress very normal. And in fact, exceedingly corporate uh, most of the time. So, you know, it doesn't really... That's my base for, like, normal. So it, it doesn't occur to me that other people might not consider my particular look or my way or whatever as as strange. I've struggled with those all my life. Even before the piercings in Mohawk, I just... People would, you know... So it, that doesn't occur to me. And I'm a, I'm a podcast addict, so... I listen to Adam Carolla podcast a lot. I listen to a lot of other ones. Uh, Adam Carolla has a new news girl. Her name is Allison Rosen. And uh, they decided to do a contest to win a date with Allison Rosen. And I was like, hey, I like that. She's, you know, she's a good-looking gal, you know? And it was like, send in an essay, 250 words max, and a photo. And uh, they'll, you know, play the... Uh, yeah, you know, they'll 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 read the thing and and they'll look at the picture and decide whether you can get a date with Allison Rosen. And they decided to do it as like a bracket system, and so they lined it up where it's you and somebody kind of like you, and you know so on and so forth. They only did four guys uh, last night. I guess there's there's more to come. <laughs> um, and so I I took one photo specifically for her where I was like. You know, I was holding a hello, Allison kind of sign. It was, you know, cutesy. Uh, I'll see if I can pull it up real quick. Yeah, let's see this photo. All right. it's It was a good, I thought it was a good picture. You have a snake on you as well? No, no, no. It was no. very normal. Look at this. That's a very normal looking photo, right? That is not normal. That's a very, <laughs> what are you talking about? That's a very normal looking photo. I mean, those are some aggressive piercings. You need to change your whole, pers- you know, you, you don't, you have to realize the uh, way people look at you. You look like I get that. I'm just prison. saying, like look, <laughs> that was a very, all right, well, whatever. That's not the photo they picked. And everyone thinks something this, different, I guarantee This you. is the photo they picked, okay? Now, I look... As far as I'm concerned, very debonair. I look. Uh, I feel like that's a handsome photo of me. I'm very proud of that photo. It's me at a club. That's some I'm handsome wearing wallpaper. A, wearing a, yeah, dude, I love that wallpaper. <laughs> I'm wearing a vest, you know what I mean? A tie, button-up shirt. I'm, you know, to the nines. You look so like that's the, the one they picked. Party. But but apparently that one's kind of scary. So I I sent it in um, Sunday, and then I and I then I saw on Twitter like, oh, tonight's episode we're gonna go over the Allison Rosen stuff, and I was like. All right, I'll, I'll I'll give it a listen. You know, like I I normally would wait until I wow this is uh I, I would normally wait until I was like at work and and I had all this time in the world, but uh so it kind of started off bad. Would you pronounce that Mitch? Sorry, Mitch? I can't. so that was the, there was they were looking at the names and then that's when Allison said, Beard "Sorry, Mitch? I can't be with someone who spells their name that way." And then you'll they be using that. They them specially. Mm-hmm. We're starting with the Nick. What? We're starting with the Nick and Mitch, I guess. Yeah, we're going to start with the wannabe comedian conference. Oh, right? no! Right. I was all, what is this? What is that? Who was that? That's their, uh, that's their, their sound, their uh, voice guy. Sound like a this is the wannabe brother. comedian, and I was like, oh, come uh. on. Now, the guy I was up against, I've never heard of, and in his bio, he said that he's been performing at open mics all over town. Wait, you and I'm like... You you were only it was you and one other guy. Well, the, for the for that part of the bracket, and uh, then there was two other guys later. So, like I said, they did four should, four overall. I'm sure so there was then, a lot that uh, they didn't even put up on this thing, right? Like you made it that far, you made it to the final. I sent it in Sunday morning as well, and they were their cutoff was Sunday at noon. So it's like, yeah, I don't. I mean, I don't know. Maybe they were just like these fucking weirdos. Let's go with them, and uh, let's see. Next, my name is Mitch. I spell it M I T C Z for Google Karma. Marzoni. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. So they didn't care for that. So here was the first guy. I'll play you his little bio thing. I'll play you a piece wow. of Wow. This is some uh, slim... Nope, that's not the right one. This is the guy. I feel that I'd be a great candidate to date Allison because I am a charming, witty, and age-appropriate male living in the greater Los Angeles area. <laughs> Already not as good as my intro. If she likes guys like Adam, I am a 29-year-old male who has lived here my whole life with aspirations of becoming a funny man. All right. Uh, All right. Yeah. So that's what we're dealing with. No. Now, I'll skip ahead a little bit so you can hear towards the end where he starts talking about <laughs> open mics. Why don't you I am working on up? a stand-up act in many Los Angeles world-renowned open mics. Yeah. A rehearsal for a community theater production of <gasps> Jesus Christ Superstar. Uh, oh, I actually like yes, that musical. Yes, I am the one straight guy who does musical theater. Mm. I'm working part-time as an educator for a camp program that takes local kids from Los Angeles, Los Angeles's many... All right, whatever. So that's that's my my competition. 
Oh, that now, was the other guy. Yeah, that's the other guy. Oh, okay. oh you think I me? No, I wouldn't. No, but I'm not gay. Guy. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. just do musicals. All right, so <laughs> just so you know, guys, I would that that's that's not even anyway. Well, what? Very, so she uh, really likes Facts of Life. So I was like, I'll throw in a Facts of Life joke. Now, the only Facts of Life episode that I could remember was when Natalie and Tootie wanted to start a business called, called Nat and Toot. Or, or then they fought about Toot and Nat or Nat and Toot. And then Tootie goes to the lady and she says, uh, "She says we're having creative difficulties. I'm creative and she's difficult." Right. Um, and Garrett. so I was I was like, I remember that quote in that episode. I will yeah. reference it. I will work that in there. And I said, I liked, I enjoyed Facts of Life, but the only one I can remember was this one. Now, I wanted to write Natalie and Tootie, but then I was like, is it Natalie? It's been so long. What if it's not Natalie? It's I know it's Nat, but what if it's... <laughs> so I look up on Wikipedia, and it says Natasha, Natalie, so and so forth. Uh. So I was like, fucking roll the dice said natasha oh, she boy. gave me mucho shit about that oh, did not no. care for my uh did oh, not no. care for that hold wow on. hold on let me see if i can wow. find the uh <laughs> wow this is um I to pick a winner. Oh, oh. Yeah. wait do we know <laughs> Um, I'm trying to find the spot. Wow. I enjoyed Facts of Life. Oh, Wait a minute. What? Huh? <laughs> but the <laughs> only one I can remember is where Natasha and Tootie wanted to start what? a business. What? Natasha? Oh, wait. He's gay. Yeah, no, there's no Natasha. Yeah. Oh. Now, yeah. they left out the last of my, my letter. The, rest, the next line down was, where do you come down on it? Is it Nat and Toot or Toot and Nat? Like, I thought that would be, you know? I, I threw in the two pictures. They used the one where I look scary. Mitch are gay. It was. Oh, they they did say that. They did say that. So here's kind of. Wow. Let's this see is, if this is the. This is where it gets a little rough. I'm, uh, slim Pickens. Yeah. Some <laughs> slim Pickens. We've only seen two. I don't want to speak for you. All right, but the winner from this bracket's moving. Oh, on. I have to right. pick a winner. Oh, oh. Yeah. Wait, do we know their ages? Twenty nine and who cares? Thirty two. You see that? 29 and who cares? I'm just out of the race right off the bat. Who picks the winner, Allison or everyone? Everyone. I hmm. I can't be trusted to make this decision on my own. <laughs> I'm I, I have to move along the 29-year-old low voltage pizza delivery guy. Low voltage? <laughs> yeah, he works on he works on movie sets installing low voltage lights and Adam Carolla oh, was yeah. like, uh, that means like Christmas lights at yeah. best. Like he helps string Christmas lights. It's like the <laughs> lamest job, like it's the weakest job. And pizza delivery is probably what he does full time, you know, this whole thing. And I'm like, I'm a web designer, I'm gamefully employed. And he's like, Yeah, good, you know. First one we saw? Yeah. Hold on, let me see if I can find the first part of that. Yeah, here Next. we go. D Z for Google Karma. Marzoni. No. Wow. <laughs> wow. I'm a 32-year-old stand-up comedian slash podcaster slash web designer living in Hollywood. One of those jobs pays more than the others, but I'm gainfully employed nonetheless. Aggressive piercings. Do I get extra points for performing at Lovett's the Saturday after you and Adam did your first show there? Performance. <laughs> if performing means bossing tables, no. I'm Convenient. just getting cut. I'm not into sports. So you don't need. So you don't needn't worry. I'll commandeer the TV to yell at complete strangers in matching outfits. I b I'll bet Adam's gonna rant about dudes who don't like sports, but I'll take my chances. You're worth it. Now hold on. Ah. That was a good line, but he <laughs> fucked it up because I wrote, "I'll bet Adam has a rant about," and I wrote it as Adam would say it, which is. Let me just say this about guy, dudes who don't like sports, <laughs> dot, dot, dot. So I feel like that was a better, w but whatever, we'll, we'll go with it. Remind him, and I, I'm an atheist, and bought his book during the pre-order days. All right, well, it's all right, then. <laughs> <laughs> so I kissed a little ass, you know, I was doing all right, I was doing all right. And wow. uh, so this here's, so here's how it went down. Um, now, I feel like she was, I'm going to play, there's going to be a part in here. You'll hear the sound of a girl thinking about, what it would be like to fuck me. You'll hear that sound. First one we saw? Yeah, put, put okay, their name up Okay, I have there. to say something. Yeah. If I weren't looking at them, honestly, I would go for the, the second guy. But looking at them makes me want to go for the first guy. But I suspect I'm not going to have that much in common with the first guy. <laughs> but then the second guy scares me. Yeah, but see... <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> what the fuck? So, so, I, feel, so I, I call that a moral win. <laughs> See, both these guys aren't going to make it. Okay. You have to pick one, move forward, yeah. and uh, you're going to come here, here comes. 
because they're trying to explain to her that we're both not going to be at the finals. Right. But whatever, just pick so you can move on. Someone from the other bracket. But she's win. pretty adamant about wanting to date one of us right here. The 8 9 matchup in the first round. Yeah. yeah they're yeah. going to play and the it, one seed the yeah. next round. They're so. not going to see him in the championship rounds. It would take quite an upset. Okay, but yeah, I'll let you guys choose. Neither one of these sandbags are going to be on your gondola when you get to about 500 feet. <laughs> I know, but will I date them? See? No, I'm saying you're going to get that's, raped that's in a gondola. Promising. Okay. Yeah. Was then, that clear? Was that clear on that? It made sense to me. Okay. Um, yeah, no, I was... Okay. Hmm. Dude, there you go. Wait, wait. This is the noise right here. This is the noise. Okay. Hmm. Uh, all right. I, I cast my vote. <laughs> that's, that's it. I, I haven't seen the video. But I bet you right at the... Mm, she's like, I wonder. Because, come on. If you looked at the other guy... I don't want to pull him up because I don't want to put the dude on blast. Right. But, like... You could look at adamcarolla.com. You look at the podcast blog. Click on the one with Chris Hardwick. Scroll down. There's a little photo gallery. Find the one. There's me and the other guy. Uh, I feel like this is... Maybe I should fuck that Mitch guy. I cast my vote. Cast, cast, I, 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 what? 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 Mm, okay. mm, mm, mm. Right? That's, that's, that's... I wonder if I should fuck that guy. Right? That's what that noise is. That's what's going I, on. I there. So here's how this goes down. I don't like the aggressive piercings Seems of like Mitch. It. And the crazy spelling of the name, either. And you know what else? If he per- oh, I, I was going to say if he performs at the John Lovitz Comedy Club, that could get awkward. But regardless, if he mm-hmm. performs at the John Lovitz Comedy Club, it could get awkward. Right. So I yeah, I'm I go with you with with your assessment. We go Nick. We're going to go Nick on this one. No. Yeah. I just booted right out. Just that's uh, it. Dawn. The Dawners. That was it. The so, open uh, micer beat you. I know. I'm so <laughs> sad. But again, moral victory. Had I. That's the thing. This is what. This is where it fucks me up because it's like, it's it's literally she goes well the other guy is scary which I don't uh, you saw the photo I don't particularly think that was scary no yeah. but it's a little scary. this is where I have to go like well I guess that's where I have to admit that I'm weird and not because I'm trying to be affectatious or anything just literally like I don't see that as a scary photo by any means like I I feel like I look good there and and, and I've gotten a lot of compliments on it. It but looks like, like you're saying, you, I want your soul. You, but here's you the think? thing. <laughs> Is it really a scary <laughs> photo? Here's the thing, dude. You live in the center of Hollywood. Yeah, yeah. You, you blend in great here. <laughs> sure, yeah. There, that's like, what, a few miles? I yeah, mean, there's, yeah, a, I there's a whole world out there that's scared shitless of you, dude. <laughs> but that, that's what I'm saying is like, is what's fucked up is like, this is that the, the weird dichotomy I have in my head, right? Because it's like, okay. Had I not the piercings of the Mohawk, let's just say for the day, I put a fucking wig on and took these bitches out and sent that in, right. I would have fucking cleaned up, right? Theoretically. Oh. She said she was more interested in me. Yeah. Yeah. Except for I, I was scared. Right? Yeah. So that I would have won had I not this. However, I don't I would not I would not do well on a date with somebody who would that quickly go, he scares me. Because I'm not doing anything scary. I'm just sitting there. There is another element here, though. If you didn't have that, they probably wouldn't have picked you to be in this. I don't know. The other two guys are pretty, like... Boring. Just normal. I mean, the, again, the other guy, there's four... I don't... Yeah. Like, no offense to Allison, but I don't feel like that many dudes wrote in. Because it was something they announced very briefly at the end of an episode on, like, Thursday. Email in or... Yeah, just yeah, email, email it in, yeah. That was the other thing. I thought that I was emailing it to Allison, and she was... Because she's the news girl. Right. I assumed that she was going to read it in a private time, figure out who amongst them she wanted to even talk about. And I figured, well, I, I'm fucking shoe in on that. Um, and then she would read them on the air. And I thought that she'd be like, oh, you got it. This guy's got a fax. This is pretty clever. No. Voice guy reads it. Didn't even finish the fucking email. And I'm like, you know, I'm like, it kind of bums me out. I feel like. I would have had. I was. I was really considering CCing her on the email. I think that would have helped my chances. But that, I guess the moral of the story is, like I said, it's that weird, fucked up decision that that I never. It's like my dad wants me to just always just clean up and everything else. And now he nowadays says for the TV and movie roles. He used to be like, so you fucking don't look like a freak. Now he's like, you know, TV movie roles, which I get, and I do want to, you know. Eventually, I'm shaving the mohawk. I got to get some headshots done with the hawk because, oddly enough, don't have any of those. I only have them when it's shaved because every time I get headshots, I'm like, I should probably shave the hawk. So I'm going to get some headshots with the hawk, and then I'll probably shave it, let it grow out. Uh, but it's like, if I don't have piercings, you know what I'm saying? The kind of person who would be like, oh, the piercings scare me, 
you know, he's a fucking freaky dude, et cetera, et cetera. We wouldn't do well on a date because yeah. I would I would take her to some fucked up places and she'd be like, oh, I can't hang with this. So Fetish we wouldn't mall. do well on a date. <laughs> so like, I can take that rejection because like, okay, clearly we won't work. But it's just that thing where I'm like, I feel like I'm in high school and the popular kids are like, look at the freak. Yeah. That's that's what the way I felt yeah, yeah, when yeah. I listened to it. I don't know how. I mean, you guys heard it from kind of open minds. Um, I don't know. That's just that's life, my story. Dude. It's not just high Sit, school. Man. People don't like different. <laughs> yeah, people hate freaks no matter where you go. I just can't wait to take you to the mall out in Chino Hills. That'd be awesome. I've, uh, dude, I, I, I've <laughs> let's, go, some, let's go to suburbia. Let's go. Hang I've out. been to some podunk places. I, I went to Colorado a number of times. Oh my God, is that the devil? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, where's my dad? Oh, that's Reverend Mitch. Hey, Reverend. I am the devil. There you go. Pure, perfectly timed. <laughs> <laughs> Terribly timed. All right, I got, uh, I got, uh, I got more news. Let's see. Uh, did you guys watch any part of the uh, the Trump roast? I no. did. I watched the whole thing. Okay, good. Because I have a clip of the situation. Did you watch this? No, no. Oh, the situation bombed bombing. Bombed hard. So terrible. I have the uncut version. You've never uh, seen anything like this on this is Central. This is fucking... <laughs> this is atrocious. This is a, a new level of terrible. And I have a, I have a, a positive spin on it. I was uh, surprised they didn't cut the whole thing, by the way. It's negative to him. Oh, there was a whole bunch of jokes they did cut, by the way. Yeah, though. I read that. I, I didn't... They're not on this, unfortunately, but whatever. All right, so we're going to go to that. Can you believe this guy with his cap teeth, his hair products, and his fake tan? I mean, you're actually looking good, bro. <laughs> now, I know a lot of you people are here tonight to watch everyone shit on the dumb guy that all the Italians are ashamed of and disgusted by, you know, Lisa Lampanelli. <laughs> By the way, I, am I the only one that fucking hates that joke? Like, not not least that. I'm just saying that style of joke where it's like, yeah, blanky, 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 blank. Something terrible, something negative, but enough about, ah, right? You know yeah. what I mean? Like, whatever. I'm sure there's a, a term for that. It's called, like, a, uh, you know, like the... Oh, a bait Not and a switch. left turn, but, like... <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, yeah but it's just so, like, yeah. Set we, him up and trick him. Like, I know that we're not talking about Trump the moment you mention right. any of this shit. Like, I know. It's a roast. You're a terrible comic. You you're calling, not even a comic. You start thinking, who is he talking about? Let's, let's, yeah. let's, let's figure this out before he says it. Is it Rudy Cummings? Or yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, is he going to talk about himself? Like, it could be... Any, I don't know how many people up there are Italian. Backstage, she took my hand and shoved it down her pants, and I pulled out Larry King's teeth. What? And Snoop's two source awards. <laughs> By the way, dude, Wait. Snoop could not look more fucking pissed. <laughs> Snoop fucking hated him and then ripped him a new asshole when he got up there. And he, what's your deal? Oh, he actually, Snoop's best joke was when he got up there. He said, uh... So I guess Snooky's here tonight. And then he looks over and he goes, oh, I'm sorry. All you white people who act black look the same to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, was, that was good. You look like the chicks I used to bang before I had all this money. <laughs> oh. <laughs> do it, baby, do you're, it. You're a chick, right? <laughs> okay, yeah. On the Jersey Shore. I like she's all, uh, yeah. Like, uh, show we call ugly chicks grenades. <sighs> But uh, I actually wouldn't call you a grenade because she's not blowing up anytime soon. Uh, Meanwhile, she has a sitcom coming out soon. And, uh, and she's the hottest chick on the stage. She's fucking gorgeous, dude. Gorgeous. Oh, God. Hey, Jeff Ross, what's up, man? What's up, buddy? Jeff, me and you have a lot in common, buddy. What's that? We're both from Jersey. Uh -huh. And tonight's my first night doing comedy. <laughs> Well, it's also your last night, just so you know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, you don't. Like, don't. If it's your first time doing comedy, don't talk to Jeff don't Ross. Fuck don't fuck don't even, funny. don't even look at him. Don't even look at him. All now, right, it gets right. really bad here. Enough of that, enough. All right, all right. I see you looking at me over there, Anthony Jezelnut. I know you're a little hater, but I know you're a funny dude as well. Because the other night I told one of your super funny jokes to a supermodel and she was laughing while I was banging her brains out with the pile of money on the floor of my mother mansion. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, it's like one of those things what? where you're like, you don't get comedy, do you? Uh, like, yeah. funny is not, I had sex with a girl and there was money on the floor of a large house. <laughs> like, 
Crickets as long as I make my that's funny. As long as I make my joke sound like it's kind of like from a rap, it's gonna <laughs> yeah. be funny. These it's people. gonna work. I like. There was one joke he told. I think it's coming up. He tells a joke uh, and they no. zoom in on Ice T, just giving him the fucking worst look. Like, yeah, dude, get the did. fuck. They all just. They Jeff Ross had to save him. So, here so goes. I, I got nothing Watch against Ice-T. you, man. I got nothing against you because she's like the fifth model this week to do that. So, you know what I'm saying, right? Maybe not. All right. <laughs> Oh, boo. <laughs> now, let's wow. get to the real situation. My man, Donald Trump. Oh, dude, this is bad. This oh, is... No. I'm surprised Donald Trump didn't get up and beat the shit out of him for this one. This is so bad. Oh, no. And on the list of jokes you were not supposed to tell that night oh. was this one. Yeah, baby. I mean, look at him. He's pimping. Not a lot of guys can pull off wearing a hat like that. People are hating on him because Trump is always firing people, but it's kind of okay because he completely let himself go anyway. That's not the joke. There's my seat. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, oh, hey, chill. You know what, Donald? You got the tan, <laughs> you got the laundry down, but you got to hit the gym, pork chop. But, Donald, <laughs> I oh. like how you roll. I've seen pictures of your house. Everything in your house is gold. It was like, I need a blunt. Who the f*** decorated your house? Flavor Flav's dentist? Oh, God. I'll say this, though. Your wife is hot. This is where you don't go. Oh. This is a, there, there's no gold down this road, buddy. Oh, no. Take a fucking sharp left and shut the fuck up. But does he? The best part is she married you for love. Yup. She loves money. <laughs> oh, hey, what are you going to do? Tell you what you're gonna do. You're gonna send Jeff Ross up there to save you. Come on, let him do it. Look, just destroyed himself. Donald Trump, you're a bull. Yeah, and then Jeff Ross comes up to show off his his fat belly and calls it the saturation. So, which was actually a pretty good joke. I find it amazing that Comedy Central does not preview the jokes of these people before they allow them on. They they do, and actually Whitney Cummings had had one of one of the jokes that she wrote that they said that she wasn't allowed to tell, which was actually really really good. Was it, um, what was it, that he was, uh, wow. he was trying to buy up Lisa Lampanelli's vagina for real estate, but he had to kick out about a thousand black guys first. <laughs> somebody made a And they were like, he, you weren't allowed to say that because he actually did that once. Not with somebody's <laughs> vagina, but like, like he actually had to kick a bunch of black people out of a, a high rise building once or something like that that he had bought. So she was like, I wasn't allowed to do that joke. So, uh, so they do screen him to some degree. Yeah. But I think the part where he was like, my motherfucking mansion and all, I think that's where he, I don't think that was in the script. Mm. And uh, I feel like, look, the the love money joke, Jeff Ross could pull that off. Greg Giraldo could pull that off. Lisa Lampanelli could pull that off. Situation? Eh. Not so much. Not so much. That's, but I, here's you already like, hate the guy. Yeah, exactly. You, you already can't, you hate can't him. pull There's that no joke way. out. Yeah. <laughs> You can't pull that joke out when you're like oh, being God. booed already. Yeah, you need to pull that out when you're fucking up here. Yeah, and a del- also delivery is a yeah, huge. Yeah. Oh oh yeah. oh shush shush shush. Yeah, no, he's all, oh, 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 oh boo boo. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, and it's like all right, chill everybody, Dude. chill, yeah. chill. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why don't you got like the moment you tell the audience to chill from the booing, oh, you need God. to get off the fucking stage. And it's just wow. But I, I loved it because. I, it's it's that thing where you're we're all comedians so it's 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 that little bit of like poetic justice like the big dumb douchebag goes to the gym tan laundry whatever the fuck you know what i mean like yeah you can hit the clubs and dance it up and show the chicks your abs but like if we had to throw down you know what i'm saying like i could walk on a stage with nothing on me i could walk on stage naked no but whatever and uh, and take a microphone in front of however many 100 fucking people yeah, and they will be laughing the whole time, and you get that microphone to the situation, fucking crickets and booze, <laughs> and I love that. I love that. Like no matter what he does, he'll never have that. And uh, so that was amusing as fuck for me to watch um, from that perspective. <laughs> it just gave me like such a like yeah. It's so painful. I don't know. Uh, you ever get that? No. Oh never god. I think it's it's that kind of thing where like. It's uh, part of why comics get so, uh, you know, hateful towards themselves and everything else like that. Because you hear all these chicks going like, I like a sense of humor and all this. And then you're like, 
And you don't like a sense of humor. You like a, a hot guy who, who can like tell a joke every 10 minutes while you're like softball pitching him the easiest shit in the world. And then you're giggling uncontrollably, which makes him think that, you know, he's really funny. So he'll keep going. But it's like, it, you know what I mean? It's, it's that kind of thing. It was like, it's just sad listening to douchebags try to be funny. And you're like, ugh, it's just, but you know, whatever. Some, some chick's like, yeah, she'll go for it. I don't know. Wow. You're, you're like shaking your head in disgust still. This is, it's just, it's just painful to watch. It is no. It Even is. though I, I don't really. I'm not a fan of the guy. I'm not. But it's just. Oh, was that so? So you had because they played that on the Adam Carolla show, and what they said was something like, uh, "It's like seeing the popular kid finally get their comeuppance, and it's just not as satisfying because now you almost feel bad for them." But I'm like, I don't feel bad for the guy in any way at all. No, no I don't feel bad for him. I just like just. Oh God, I just feel bad for anyone that wasted their time <laughs> watching that. Just, I'm this, surprised this. they didn't cut it. Yeah, they yeah, should have. Yeah. The I, th- I, I don't know. I didn't watch the broadcast. I don't know how much of that they kept. I'm guessing during the rebroadcast, it's was it. probably like 30 seconds. Oh. You know, well, I'm guessing. I, you know? I watched it on the DVR three days after it was on. Right. I, I forgot to tape it the first time. So they were still playing repeats uh. of that crap. Yeah. Wow. So uh, I have a, a very amusing clip of uh, somebody like found Andrew Dice Clay outside a restaurant. <laughs> oh, I put that up. Mm-hmm. Did you? Yeah, oh, okay. comedy doc. The clay. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah where he's like, he's trying to talk about. They're asking about Gilbert Gottfried, and he decides. Was that he outside the haha? <laughs> it doesn't look like it. It looks like <laughs> yeah. some just random ass restaurant, like <laughs> the Olive Garden. Is he hanging out with Jack? <laughs> <laughs> he's just standing there out out there alone, just chilling, doing his thing. Fucking Olive Garden. Yeah, with the uh, eye patch. Yeah, <laughs> with, with the eye patch of all things, and he just starts ranting on Charlie Sheen. Um, you know what I mean? You know, maybe, maybe, what did he say? He, he, said, he um, said something about, wait, I think I, um, something about, like he made fun of the, the Japan thing, the yeah. Tokyo thing. Yeah, he made fun <laughs> of the tsunami. And he made fun of that? Yeah. Okay. He said right. Japanese, he Forget said Japanese. Forget about him. Forget about him. <laughs> How about, well, well, this, <laughs> that everybody's afraid to say anybody, anything to this, uh, Charlie Sheen, with all his ranting and all the attention he's getting, maybe he should say something nice and and maybe some kind words to all those people out in uh, in Tokyo and to their families while he's got the spotlight on him. You know what gets me about something like that? Nobody's got the balls to tell this guy. <laughs> he just goes. My favorite part is like towards the end he starts referencing 80s commercials about drugs. He's so f***ed up. You don't even see the billboards from that show you what doing the one you're being a anti-semitic guy to to your ex-boss uh <laughs> y- y- whatever his name is that you're doing anti-semitic remarks <laughs> nobody likes that <laughs> you're not a rock star you're not a comic you're the biggest <laughs> loser in the world as far as i'm concerned okay go get the help you <laughs> need nobody's on twitter watching you going hey charlie's great charlie's winning Everybody's watching you fall, and everybody's afraid to say it to you. Get f- help. From and someone who knows it. I think you lost a job, didn't you? Maybe you need some help, too. He looks like I'm a big, fat, filthy the, pirate now. Wait <laughs> for the part where he, like, where he talks about the fucking uh, the fried egg they commercial. They do commercials about f- drugs. Oh, yeah, here it is. Advice. <laughs> I'm not afraid to tell you. You f***ed up. They do commercials about f- drugs all the time this is your your brain on drugs and then they put it in a frying pan and showed up he came out of a fucking now cryogenic they chamber like <laughs> it's just like, I know. they unfroze like, him he sounds like your grandparents telling you not to do drugs He's like they have commercials they have commercials about an egg in a frying pan and that's what you're doing <laughs> that's your brain on drugs don't you realize that i don't think and the fact that he's wearing a gold's gym shirt like He's fat, like there's that. Just because he, I think he's trying to play this thing, like he's trying to be, like he works out. His whole yeah, career, his, his whole uh, career has been based on bagging on bald people and fat <laughs> people, and this is what happens. <laughs> this to yeah, you. yeah, this is what happens to you. Hickory this dickory is, if you ever wondered about karma, oops, I'm <laughs> sucking my own cock. Oh, what? Let, let me show you. Uh, let me show you Anodize Clay if oh. you're curious about what happens when you spend a lifetime just spewing like. I just I I just love that he's like so completely is like Gilbert Gottfried, fuck him. Let's talk about Charlie Sheen. <laughs> like what? And not only that, what's going on with space? 
<laughs> exactly. <laughs> so where does he go? I don't know. What? They got all this shit on the fucking Mars? What? <laughs> what? We don't get this fucking good shit down here? Let me tell you something, fucking NASA. <laughs> fucking with your Mars rover. <laughs> fucking, why is my fucking... I got a fucking... Uh, I got a fucking Bronco. The fucking door won't close. Why can't you fix... What the fuck, NASA? Why don't you make a fucking door? It doesn't... <laughs> Yo. <laughs> uh, I'm a fucking pirate up in here. Yeah. <laughs> still, still uh, rocking it. Oh, uh, good times. Oh, I good used to times. love Andreas Clay. Oh, did you? Oh, I Me saw him so many times, dude. Greek the Theater, Dice, Vegas. Really? Laugh Factory. Did you open for him? No. So. Never open for him. No, oh, rats. Never bumped you. I'd like to book him on a show. Yeah. You probably could. It's just, I <laughs> wonder. You I have know. random shit to talk about. I'd be fucking curious. You know, I. It's comedy, though. We're not Wait, talking about politics. The other <laughs> one that's like the other one that's really gone off the rails is uh, Gallagher. Gallagher's really gone off the rails in he recent times. He was in the times. hospital a couple. He collapsed at a show a few days ago. Oh, really? I, I posted that on the same page. Uh, yeah, I didn't yeah, see yeah. that. Oh, wow. Well, I didn't look at it. At just recent interviews written and uh, Mark Maron, he's just insane. <laughs> like, I, uh, Mark Maron's one was pretty good because he started off like, just ranting in this kind of like Republican fashion and all these he had these racist remarks and anti-Semitic remarks and all this different shit and Mark Merritt was like okay let's get into that let's figure out why the what the fuck are you talking about right starts getting into it and then and then he's just they're jokes these are jokes and it was like <laughs> and he's like well why'd you just say that because I'm joke. see you can't tell a joke anymore and it was just like he he thinks that he's got like like, like he's a deeper side of comedy. That's the way he thinks in his head. Like that's what he always talks about. Like he was really, you know, he's really bringing it to the people, you know. And now th these comics fuck around on stage. He he says that you shouldn't have a bottle of water on stage unless it's a prop, unless you're using it as part of your act. Otherwise, you're just fucking around up there. Wow, what an idiot. It's just it's old school. <laughs> it's just yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, wait, I'm sorry. What what was your big act? Oh, you smash shit with you, a fucking sledgehammer. You slash it's a watermelon. Fruit. Yeah, fucking smashing <laughs> melons with fruit. Woo, you really like forwarded the goddamn, you know, comedy world Thanks, there. Man. Now, here's a, oh, damn, you're going to, oh, at least he's not going to the bathroom. Good, so he'll be able to hear me. Because this is a funny uh, little thing, and, and I think that um, it also sort of upsets me. Uh, Courtney Love, uh, there's a sort of tell-all book uh, coming out. Um, uh, wherein uh, Neil Strauss, you you might remember from the game, mm -hmm. uh, was a, he he wrote that she uh she once almost snorted Court Kurt Cobain's ashes, and which I feel like is a fucking non-story, and people are making a big story out of it because he he claims it's all real, but the way that. Uh, here's how he describes it. She walked to a dresser, pulled open a drawer, and removed a square-shaped tin. She removed the lid, revealing a plastic bag full of white ashes. She added, Too bad you don't do coke. Otherwise, I'd suggest taking a metal straw to it. And then, uh, at the, at the very end, Strauss added, She was serious when she made the suggestion. Which I, I don't buy. I don't buy, like, a second-hand account like that, right. for one. And for two, I mean, it just sounds like so soon after there was that Keith Richards, you know, snorting his dad's ashes thing. And and that was like he actually did it, and then he said he didn't, and whatever. But I feel like to have a story where it's like, I thought about it. Yes, I did. I made a joke about it. Mm -hmm. And it was like, and he's like, she was so serious. And I feel like, how do you fucking know? You know, I feel like he was probably like, well, what a fucked up joke to make, and took it far more serious. Right. I think she was probably like, I think in her head, having done as much coke as she has, she probably pulled out and was like, this looks like a mountain of coke. I wonder. Right, right, right. Like, yeah, it's too bad you don't do coke, man. We could totally distort these up. That feels like where it comes from. I don't know. What do you think? I don't know. I have a question for you real quick, not to change the subject. It's the same subject. Change as much as you want. Isn't cool. there, don't they say that, aren't there people that theorize that she helped kill Kurt Cobain? That's like a thing, right? Yeah, yeah. I have that DVD. Kurt and Courtney. Yeah. What do you think? You know, I, I it's hard to say. I'm not a conspiracy theorist guy. I'm I'm like most of the time I reject it. Um, but there's certain I do like I mean, there's certain conspiracies that I that I'm iffy on just because oh, certainly certainly not buying the conspiracy on that. I'll, I'll I'll take the official story and run with it. It's fine by me. 
Okay. I will. I will. I will grant uh, the best I could. The closest I would get to conspiratorial is that I could buy if it came out thirty years from now. I could buy that. They thought this probably won't go down. There's a very, very slim chance of it going down. But if it does, you know what? We could do this with it. I could buy that. Talk about nine eleven. Yeah. Okay. I could buy that they were like, not that they didn't do anything about it, but that they kind of were like, Psh, right. And then like it was like, yeah, but if it does happen, blankety blank, and somebody overheard that and didn't alert the right people because they took that seriously, much the same way as Cordy Love and the. Uh, Kurt's ashes, but um, have you watched the videos, the conspiracy? Videos? Yeah, yeah, I've got of nine eleven ones. Nine eleven, oh, God, yeah. It, you know what the thing is? It's like with any with any any claim that somebody's making, you have to look at the person making the claim, figure out if you can disprove it, and then you also look at their character. Um, it's a little bit of a logical fallacy to uh, you're supposed to ignore the source of the argument, but I feel like in certain cases you just can't. And when you take a guy who wanted to make a film about a conspiracy theory, what if? Mm-hmm. And uh, he had talked to his favorite actor, James Gandolfini, and asked him for advice on making a movie. He says, find something you're really passionate about that you haven't seen done and w- run with it. So he wanted to work on a movie about like a big conspiracy theory and what, whatever, what, what would happen. And then... Um, Decided, well, 9-11 would be a good one to pick for, you know, because it's a big disaster and what if kind of thing. And then sort of worked that into a narrative wherein he made the documentary. And a lot of people like to go, well, he's not making money from that. And I'm like, the fuck? The hell he isn't. He sold the fucking things online for 20 bucks a pop. And he said, if you could prove that a family member of yours died in the thing, then he'd give it to you for free. Who's going to fucking do that? You're going to send this fucking clown a, a goddamn death certificate so you can get 20 bucks off a fucking video that... You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. And then on top of that, I mean, he himself has been like, oh, it's given me uh, privileges to fly all over the world, I'm world-renowned, all this different stuff. All these conspiracy people like hold him up. He got a lot out of it. Quite right. a lot to gain uh, by by making the claim. Now, yes, the government has a lot to gain by denying the claim, I'll grant you, but... At the same time, I just can't buy into... The biggest problem with it is is the amount of money you'd have to pay to the amount of people you'd have to pay to shut everybody the fuck up. Right. If you knew firsthand, you could prove, let's say, that it was definitely a, an inside government job. You had fucking some kind of definitive proof you could fucking roll down the line and say, this is the timeline of events. How much would I have to pay you to never in your entire fucking life, say a goddamn word. A lot of money, I'm sure. And how, how No, many, I mean you. Seriously, the, yeah. how much? I don't want to be involved in this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I mean, 10 million, 1 million? Oh, I mean, if I was someone who has no heart and I could kill a bunch of people just to start a war, you know, if I was one of these people. No, 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 no. I'm saying, let's say you, you work a, you're a fucking office clerk. Oh, I just have, you know I found saying? out something. You found out some shit. They know you know some shit. They want you just to keep your fucking mouth shut. Give me some rims, motherfucker. <laughs> this whole thing, <laughs> bitches. This whole thing, I'd just be thinking, if they can make this happen, they can kill me in a second. Why are they even negotiating here? But I would take, give me $10 million. Yeah, you see? And I mean, how many thousands of people? It, it just, it, I just can't buy into a, a, a government that's as incompetent as they are could, could pull that off. But anyway, uh, the Courtney Love thing is interesting, but then also the... The reports, the people who come forth saying, well, I have inside knowledge, are not the most reputable folks. Like, uh, lead singer of The Mentors is not, you know, rape rock is not really, <laughs> well, that's not a highly people, respected thing. There were two people thing. present when it happened, right? Her and him. Oh, there was more? No, there was nobody present. Oh. Nobody ever claimed to be present. The closest thing is that they, that, that his best friend claims that he went to the house looking for Kurt, but never went upstairs. Oh, I see what you're saying. And that does seem a little odd huh? that you wouldn't go upstairs. Why not? What if you got to pee? I mean, if you if you go <laughs> into the house, your friend's <laughs> I would, missing. Right? I would go upstairs. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. It seems Hello. a little. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, Kurt, are you in here? Oh, golly, your head's blown off. Uh, it just seems, you know. Yeah. I I don't really know. I because it's hard to say. I mean, that's one of those you could go either way. You could see how she would gain. She was kind of crazy, 
it, and and easily he could have killed himself. It would be very easy, you know. But at the same time, he very well might have killed himself. I, I would sooner believe that he did kill himself uh, than I would believe that that she, you know, did it. Um, but I don't know. It's hard to say because I know that they were going through a rocky turbulent time. That's well documented. Blah blah blah. Yeah. I don't know. You think Elvis is still alive? No. Okay. No, Siri Bob. All right. I was just wondering. I have a weird conspiracy, a, a weird sort of conspiracy about AIDS, though. Yeah. That one's a tough one for me. Yeah. That they were trying to get rid of gay people? No. I, I think if you put it from a religious perspective, if you want to scare kids away from fucking and, you're not, and, and Jesus will get you is not working, I feel like, well, when you fuck, you'll get a deadly disease that'll... You know, melt your skin off. That's a pretty good way to go. Yeah, I'm not saying that AIDS is a conspiracy. This is something that you created. You didn't hear this from someone else. No, I, I'm just saying. I'm just curious. I don't remember. I, I mean, I've heard that. Yeah, the government created it to you know take out black population, gay population. <laughs> right, right, right. And it's interesting that it started in San Francisco, but then their their immune systems were so low at that time. Anyway, we're talking about like the disco scene of you know doing blow all night you know staying up three four days in a row that's terrible for your system regardless but you know that's when people go well the, then it's not H, it's not aids it's hiv and that's not really a that's just your body shutting down on you i'm not going to get into all that but i will say this what i find interesting is that they did studies on uh, couples in africa where um one party one of the one part of the couple uh was h uh, full-blown aids or hiv positive let's say and the other uh half of the couple was not and they were having unprotected sex and like the CDC, a number of studies, there's a shitload of studies out there where people have gone in and said, well, if you're going to be that dumb, can we study you? And they were like, yeah, sure, come on in, watch us hump or whatever. And it turns out none of the circumcised men got AIDS. And the CDC now formally recommends circumcision for that reason. I think that's interesting. So I don't have to wear condoms anymore. Uh, well, there's still herpes and gonorrhea and ah, chlamydia but you can live and syphilis. Through that. And yeah, yeah. Yeah, herpes is just, you know, take your Valtrex, whatever. Hey. Yeah, sure. I feel like you're much more likely... T it's hard to get, um, not herpes, um, AIDS or HIV in heterosexual sex usually, isn't it? I mean, yeah, in yeah, general. Yeah, yeah. So, I There's mean, not a lot. I mean, I, I can't find a lot of documented cases of... I, I actually can't think of a single one that I found of a circumcised, non-drug-using, straight male getting AIDS. And if you find one, he's probably banging her in the ass. Yeah, ah. which is also bad news because there's a lot of you know tears and yeah. fine, fine I, anal sex is bad if you're trying to avoid AIDS. I guess is what I'm getting at. Yeah. So I, you know, it, it's not so much that I think that it was it, it's conspiracy in the sense that you know whatever. I'm, I'm just I saying I think that the scare, that the overblowing of the scare and and people not talking publicly about like for instance, it's a strange fucking coincidence. About the circumcision thing. That's fucking weird. And that doesn't get talked about enough. And that's where I'm like, that's kind of conspiratorial. And that's not huge shit. It's just mm. sort of like, it's interesting you don't hear that mentioned much. <laughs> I'm just saying. I heard it coming out. I knew it. <laughs> and if you're ever having sex with Mitch and you want to make sure you don't get HIV, make sure he jizzes in the trash can. <laughs> <laughs> that is a surefire way to prevent... Pregnancy, AIDS, you know and otherwise. I know. <laughs> you know, sometimes I just have to let it go. I mean, I'm just saying. If you pull it out and put it in the trash. You never know. I mean, you know, I mean, why not? You're both good, actually. Uh, You're good, dude. Good oh. ah. Thank you. <laughs> I'm just saying. I was the bird. In, no, was it the bird? I was the bird in Aladdin. <laughs> Iago. Yeah, that's me. I'm so ticked off that I'm molting. Look at this. My fur is getting thinner. Ah, this is ridiculous. <laughs> All right, I know, I know who, who does the better impression now. He does. That's right. <laughs> Woo! Whoa! Uh, we, <laughs> what was that? No Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! Ah, uh, good times. Uh, yeah. So this is a little uh, interesting. Paris Hilton uh, had a birthday to She's celebrate. She's still alive. Her. Yeah, no, right? <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, she has Yay! not been in the news for a while. Uh, for her thirtieth birthday, um, wow. She had a uh, she had a special cake made. Big special special cake. I don't know why they found the sluttiest picture on earth to use of her for this particular article, but you know, I'm not complaining. Um, I should tell you about the time she I looks met good for Paris Hilton 30. once. Um, but yeah, so she had a thirtieth birthday. I think she got, and a she had job, this this cake over here. 
I think Based on that picture. No, 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 no. <laughs> I think that's I think that, that's what brought it to mind. I think that's before the boob job right there. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I think that she just recently got one like in the last year. Yeah, but so man, she is, is there's dumb. a cake in the uh in the corner there. Um oh, yeah, yeah. that she you can't really see it, but it this cake over here in the corner, that cake right there. Mm. This guy was this guy like snuck into her birthday party and he was like, Nobody touched the fancy cake. They yeah. all ate the one that she's blowing. Uh, as I guess if she blows it, you got to eat it. So the guy was like, you know what? I'm just going to pick up the fucking cake, walk the fuck out. There it is in his car. <laughs> and then he like, wakes up the next morning. He's like, what the fuck do I do with this cake? I, I've got evidence. It's like a dead body. I will take it to the homeless shelter <laughs> and feed homeless people. <laughs> nice. But then people felt bad that Paris Hilton's special cake got stolen. So she got a whole bunch more cakes. Oh, God. Just a whole shitload, even that cake, apparently. I don't know why, that, I don't know why that's on there. But awesome. it's just ridiculous. <laughs> like People are like, oh, poor Paris. And it's like, that's the worst time to replace her cake. That you know, they gave it to homeless people. Like you'd think that they'd be like, well, let's bake some more cakes and also give them to the homeless know, people no. in Paris Hilton's honor. But no, they're like, no, let's fatten that bitch up. Let's get us some. Let's get us some more cakes. Um, it is interesting that Paris Hilton's back in the news. I will grant you that. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, uh, that's good. It's, uh, I, 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 there is hope. There is. There is. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Trying to think of. Uh, here's a real quick one that I just think is fascinating. Somebody uh, pointed this out to me earlier today. In the official uh, uh, electronic code of federal regulations, Article One Two One Seven One Zero Six. Title 14, <clears throat> this is interesting. Pursuant to U.S. Note 1, Chapter 8 of Chapter, or Subchapter 8 of Chapter 98, HTSUS, articles brought into customs territory of the United States by NASA from space shall not be considered an importation, and no certification of entry of such materials through U.S. Customs shall be required. Good. This provision is applicable to articles brought to the U.S. from space, whether or not the articles were launched into space aboard a NASA vehicle. So when do we start getting coke from Mars? All right. <laughs> Must get some moon coke, bitches. <laughs> Man, you guys tried that moon coke shit, man. Okay, so here's the deal. We're going to move our (laughs) establishment all the way to space. (laughs) So we don't have any more fucking problems, okay? (laughs) I mean, I'm trying to think of a time that that... I do wonder, wait, if you went up into space and you stole a satellite... (laughs) <laughs> right? That's legal, technically, isn't it? It's not a lot. They can't get you at customs. Yeah. You can be like, <clears throat> sub-chapter 8 of or chapter 98, <laughs> pursue it to article 4. You can see that this is free and clear, fuckers. That's so when awesome. you start getting those commercial moon flights, man, you can hop out and start stealing whatever the fuck you want. I just can't wait to get like mail order brides, like mail order Martians. That we would can be make awesome. millions. <laughs> I'm going to get millions. some Martian pussy. <laughs> Let's build a rocket. We can make millions stealing shit from you space. Mean, 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 but it would take millions to get the rocket. What's the over under on that? I don't know what the. I think. I mean, I, I think a moon rock goes for a shitload, though. Let's get. Drunk. Let's be fair. So if you got like a giant moon rock and you cut it up into smaller pieces, you might be able to make your money back and then some. And you water it down with some earth rock. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> cut that shit with some <laughs> Colombian shit, and you're fucking blast off, bitches. Man, I cut this with moon. <laughs> How much is moon rock worth? I have no a lot. You ever seen a moon rock? I thought I did. I don't know. <laughs> there goes that plan. I mean, it's you can't take that play. much back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck the moon rock. You know what we should be talking you about? what, NASA? <laughs> Fuck you. And your fucking moon rocks. <laughs> and your Where's anti-sedimentic my... remarks. <laughs> oh! Where's my fucking cheese is what I want to know. They're supposed to be fucking... They don't want to give you the fucking cheese. I've you seen them on the commercials. commercials? The man, on, man on the moon with the cheese? What the fuck? You'd the, see the man in there was the cheese. Where's maybe, the fucking cheese? Maybe what if I that guy know. said some Don't nice bring stuff. Me rocks. <laughs> <laughs> Shit is ridiculous. Moon rock. <laughs> oh, right. So yeah, apparently nice. it's okay to just import anything you want from the spa- from space from the space. I do have a question though, because you brought up Martians and such, Martian pussy. How much, if you went to another planet, how much like a human would a thing need to be before you'd consider? No, nah, I just need it? to be wet and have a slit. But then you could then <laughs> for that logic, you'd fuck a cow here. So there's no. Nah. So is the rule just it needs nah. to be from another planet? Because then you get cow aids. Oh yeah, you what don't want that. Mad cow aids. You don't. No, want it's that. cool because the aliens have apparently. I've seen all the movies. They have the technology to somehow just 
keep them fix so you. Healthy. Yeah, they they, they fix how you. How close to a how close to human would a would a, an extraterrestrial being have to be before you'd fuck it, Brian? She could have multiple arms. She could. Uh, I don't like the white skin. How do you know if it's a she or a he? Well, uh, yeah, it has to be a she. Well, how would you know? I mean, you was looking for space titties. I'm looking for space with ET titties. <laughs> <laughs> they Chip, would have to be Chip glowy Chip. titties. They would have to be there glowing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> glowing boobs is all I'm going to You remember the game where you had the touch and the pattern? <laughs> That's what it would have to be. <laughs> and and at least, I don't, I'm just saying, maybe three, four pussies. Why not, right? Right? <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 maybe I'm the only one that thinks about this, but I've, I've, I've considered that a number of times. Is like if I travel, if, if we got the intergalactic travel thing down and I went to another planet and I found some humanoid looking things, like how, I'm, I'm trying to think like what they'd have to look like before I'm like, I'd fuck that. Because, you know, our, our standards yeah. of attraction is going to be different. Intelligence has a lot to do with it too. Like when you see a cow, it's like, oh, that's too stupid. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, is like, that is that why you, you don't fuck a cow to uh, uh, the intelligence premise? Yeah, that's all the right. only reason. Okay. You, you, I mean, they are pretty hot. That's true. They got all the <laughs> big ass titties. Milk those bitches. Yeah. Give them the reach around. Squirt that shit. Lube it up with them. Like, oh, you're gonna kill me now. You're gonna fuck me. Thanks. Yeah, but know. then <laughs> so you'd fuck a dolphin then. They're not, they're not as smart as the aliens. Okay. That's hey, fine. don't fuck around with dolphins. They're dying every day. Yeah, that's true. That's I banged up, that yeah. Little Mermaid once she hit 18. <laughs> that's why I crossed the line there. <laughs> Did you cross the line Little Mermaid? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why would you bang, though? Because she didn't have... She just had that big fish tail. I guess you could just fuck her in the mouth for a while. Well, how do fish... Oh. How do fish bang? There's got to be a hole somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Well, that's true. But mermaids, they never show a hole. Probably because mermaid stories are all G and shit. You know, they're yeah, not like yeah, a yeah. lot of... I'm sure in Japan, they got some Japanese mermaids that are like, they got 20 holes just running down the back and you just yeah. slide up and down and come in each one kind of thing. There's something going on with the Japanese and the animation and the and the things they put inside of women. I feel like it's a, it, it this probably sounds exceedingly racist, but I feel like all the tentacle porn is penis envy. If chicks had more than one vagina and uh, you had a girlfriend, she had three vaginas, let's say. Okay. But one of them was better. You know. So like, uh, Wetter, like fucking warmer, a girl in the ass. Or, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would you even use the other two vaginas? I feel like I feel like I would just to mix things up. You're like, oh, I gotta hit that one too. Like, I mean, it's not you know, be as good. I, it's hard to say because it's like, look, a, a pussy feels better than a mouth. But it's like sometimes I like to just lay them on the edge of the bed, let the head tilt back, and just you know. Mom, like, if you're watching, fuck. please change it. Oh yeah, sorry. You yeah, don't watch it, you Justin's <laughs> mom. I feel you know, like when the head's like leaning off the edge of the bed, you can you get that straight lateral thing. You gotta th- you gotta know their limits. You can't just dive in there. Yep. You know, you gotta make sure they. You gotta watch him eat a kielbasa someday or something first yeah. you gotta you know but i feel like uh you know so i had a, I had a girl like that uh for a few <laughs> she years had three vaginas no no three oh. vaginas i'm just saying she could do the mouth thing and she oh. liked doing that lean off the because i could like go down on her while oh. i was doing that and then you know it was a good uh. time yeah so she had, she liked balls slapping against her forehead what am i gonna do hey no who problem. am i to, who am i to tell this girl hey, she can't like have what that. she wants so no it's teeth. like no teeth she was very she was very well trained I, I gotta say <laughs> All things considered, I'll, I'll do Let a me drink. take my teeth out. I'll drink one for her. What happened to her, dude? Mm. Seems like you missed her a little bit. Fell off the edge of a cliff, died on Are impact. Are you serious? Yeah, terrible. Are you fucking with me? I lost her at I the may early have, age of nine. I may, have, I may have put a brick on the gas pedal, but no, I she she lapped me for about four different dudes, so that's cool. Oh. It happened. Four different dudes. Well, when yeah, we broke up, got back together, broke up, got back together, broke up, got back together. Uh, you know, it was that kind of thing. It was like, you remember this, Justin. We made I know a movie this girl. That. No, yeah, said yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's 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 literally uh, that was just neat that she like was down for that because like and that's usually something you do that's like first date you know it's what I like mean first, first couple date. not only for but first couple dates when shit's still exciting chicks will let you be a little more wild and then you you date them and they're like look we're I just did that to to capture you yeah you know what I mean like like uh, set a trap yeah so you come in and hang out with me and yeah. then once you're there they're like no more no yeah. no no yeah because you can't be it. like fucking shoving shit you can't be doing that fucking this is my exactly face. we don't like have that, the time this is exactly like that dice joke so she was good right <laughs> how are you supposed to got to be that way you know though sorry sorry i'm losing it i, she I didn't was watch good, enough right? dice just listen she was good right right how do you suppose she got to be that way 
That oh, was his big thing. Like oh, she I was see. a slut. I see. I yeah. see. Yeah, yeah. I but uh, but it seemed like it was crowd work when he did it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, he just yeah. got him so good. <laughs> <laughs> got you burned by the dice man. Yeah. So you know, in that situation, again, pussy felt better. But every once in a while, you got to fuck a mouth. That's uh, that's what I'm saying. That's the message I'm there. trying to. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think that's the place you got to start on a date. You can't start with the pussy. You got to start with the mouth. Because I look. I I fuck on the first date for about twenty different reasons, and not the least of which is like, look, I don't even get ice cream at Baskin Robbins without the free sample. You know, I know I want to know what I'm getting into before I, you know, get a scoop. Right. And uh, the other one is you you fuck on a first date, you will never end up on Jerry Springer's show, going, oh, it's a dude that explains so much. <laughs> you know, because there's always that like, how did you not figure that? Well, we never had sex. Mm-hmm. Ah, uh, uh, I see. Now That's I like, you. yeah, like, now nah, I need to get that out of the way, pronto. You know, there's a, there's a lot of these kinds of things where you just, you just want to get it out of the way as soon as possible. And it's that thing, it's like, how do I know? I, like, the difference between uh, somebody you're dating and your friends comes down to you're fucking them. Right. Right? Yeah. That's the difference. Yeah, so if that's the only distinction... Then like I got I got to get that out of, figure out if that's gonna be part of the equation or not. Yeah. And if that's not gonna be part of the equation, then we're just friends in the school. You yeah. know, we we'll, we we'll be just friends. Do yeah. you have a lot of chick friends that you don't fuck? What Let it, me define ask you a this. lot? Do you have a lot of <laughs> chick friends that you don't want to fuck? Like it's not even like an like. The, I like where this is going. Go ahead. Yeah. Yes. I mean, honestly, like a lot of times you say that that's what it is, but. If she wanted to do it, you oh yeah, sure, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah sure. So that's that. That's the thing I try to tell chicks. I'm like, all your guy friends, they want to fuck you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Go, 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 go. Talk to them when you've gone through a breakup. Go to their house and yeah. just rub your hand, just slightly breeze past their crotch, and see if that shit doesn't pop up. And yeah, they get all excited. Are you ready? I'm ready. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're they're ready to go. A baby uh, bubble? No, no, we we've been friends for years. Yeah, I know. No, it doesn't uh, work. It doesn't yeah, work that way. No. So it, men and women yeah. can be friends. Yeah, but yeah. The guy always wants to fuck the girl. I that's what again. Get it out of the way <laughs> quick. Get it out of the way. I have I have female friends that we fucked a long time ago, once or twice. We're just not compatible. Now we can be friends. Yeah. No problem. No. Yeah. They can talk to me about dudes they hook up with. Yeah. I don't ever try to fuck them again. Yeah. 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 You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I know, and and then I get the curiosity. I'm never going to be like, I wonder what she looks like naked. That thought's gone. I already got. I know right. all my curiosity. We can move on as people now. Right. Get this out of the way. Right. We just let me just get this one in the bag. Right. We're good. But it's not foolproof, because you can get horny when you're hanging out with her. You it's can- true. You could get drunk. Oh, anything. Well, yeah, you could just get yeah. You get drunk. You get. I'm not saying. Well, that. But that's what I'm saying. Is like if it's good times, you guys get along well, and you get along well in bed. Well, keep that you keep that going. Right. I'm not saying exclusively. I homie don't play that, but but I love how some girls they say like, oh well, he's just a friend. I'm like, no, he's not just a friend. <laughs> he's not like maybe he's a friend to you, but he wants to fuck you. No, yeah, he yeah, doesn't. Yeah. When's the last time you were exclusive with someone, Mitch? Oh God, what year was that? It's, so it's been a while, right? The summer oh. of '69. <laughs> 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 I got my fourth real sex screen. Now, you might not want to say this on the air. (laughs) Okay, what was the question? Was the last time I was exclusive with somebody? I know it's been a while. So here, Uh, and you don't have to answer this next question. Hold on. (laughs) I'm trying to think. Oh, fuck. What year was that? Hmm. Marty! I'm trying to think, but nothing happens. 2008? Oh, so it's not. 2009? All right, a few years. Yeah, 2009, maybe. Maybe maybe early 2009. Great, Scott. All right, anyway, follow up question. Follow up question. Now, how often do you not use condoms with these chicks over the last few years? Oh, very, very, very rarely. I, I'm, I'm big on condoms. Okay. Not like I love them. I'm not like, yay, condoms. I'm more like, yay, I don't have to wake up being scared. Oh! Right. Yeah. You know, that, that's always frightening when you're, when you're fucking and all of a sudden it feels way better. And you're like, oh, shit, I know this. I, I think, think I got AIDS. You pull out and you're like, <laughs> a little ring around your dick. Yeah. <laughs> that's the most frightening <laughs> That that probably is like if you if your first shoot doesn't go off. What did I do? Dying, you know, it's got to be a very similar because you're just like, oh, fuck, what did I do? Oh no, dude, I have, oh, it's no. a miracle or something. I I'm actually <laughs> I'm actually sort of numb to it at this point because it's like I kind of believe it's and this is going to sound terrible. 
I almost believe That's what this it's, show is for. It's hard to catch something, and I know you can catch it. When one time people have had sex once and caught it, you know sure. something. But sure, sure. Most of it, most of it, a little medical. antibiotics, and you're good. About the only thing, this is the fucked up thing about STDs. Herpes it's like and HIV. The only thing, yeah, herpes and HIV. Now, herpes is is funky because actually, oral herpes is more damaging to your immune system than genital herpes. But genital herpes has as the stigma attached. But really, when you get down to it, nothing. There's nothing. Nothing happens except it looks funky for a few days out of like a given couple of months. That's all that happens. So it's like really in the end scheme of things, it's just it's just a societal like faux ah! pas to have herpes, but it doesn't actually harm you in any way. I have I have you shouldn't get fear. you shouldn't give birth while you have an uh, outbreak. They so say. take this, folks. Anyway, go ahead. It's okay to have herpes. Have your herpes. Hey everybody, we're all gonna get late. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of my biggest fears, dude. What is getting herpes? Yeah, I have yeah, like a whole ditto. Yeah, herpes. Yoktoki. I'm with you, man. Yeah. <laughs> Every <laughs> single chick that you hang out with after that point, you got. Would her. you do it for a Scooby snack? And that could halt all <laughs> movement. Well, that's exactly. Well, actually, here in California, we are unique in the on, we are the only state in the in the union, if you will. With this law, it's a very recent law. We have a union. That you so can actually you seat. you somebody can sue you. For civil damages, if they find out you had an STD and you didn't tell them, in California they can do this. In California, yeah. Huh. That recently a woman got a hundred and fifty thousand dollars settlement over chlamydia, of all things. And that goes away. Yeah. Never to come back. Yeah. If I got herpes, because she had to go I, to the doctor. Apparently, that was a big day at work. <laughs> I would, if I got herpes, I would figure out who got, gave it to me, and I would fucking find the best STD lawyer there is that money can buy. Oh yeah, absolutely. That'd be awesome. It almost, it's almost worth yeah. it, right? It's like, yeah, I got herpes, bitch, but look, I got a mansion. That's <laughs> <laughs> telling one of your jokes while I was banging in a supermodel, you know what I'm saying? Uh, next to this pile of money on the floor of my motherfucking mansion. Check you know out these abs. You no. Know, yeah. You're an Jim asshole. Jim laundry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I, uh, I would be the uh, in consideration if I was on that show. That's uh, in consideration. That's my problem. I have a, I have a tendency to say... Inconsiderate shit. I'm, I'm I'm an accidental asshole. I like to You're say. You're supposed to be on the on the roasts. Yeah. Well, I don't even. Yeah, on the roast. Sure. I, I meant not on Jersey Shore, but I mean oh. even there, they don't. It's not like they have fucking manners on there. I I just mean I guess in real everyday life, I'm an accidentally an asshole a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, I would love to see Mitch so. on a roast. He'd be like, Oh God. You know what your pro You know I love this guy. This guy doesn't have enough fuck holes. That's what. <laughs> would go into something yeah, no about idea. fuck holes. I don't even know that roasting <laughs> would really be my platform, and that's the problem. Is you see people that are otherwise great comedians yeah. go up there, and it's just it's just not their platform. No, you could do it. I don't know because <laughs> that's not really my style of comedy to like find somebody specific and rip on them. I rip on like a type of person a lot, but but specifics it has to be like a president or you know what he, I mean. Yeah. You couldn't do worse than he did. Oh, certainly not. No, yeah. it definitely would not would not be. But then I would also know, I would look at the list and be like, they married for money? Yeah, I'm not doing that joke. Because mm -hmm. that would be like, you know, I guess maybe if I was just destroying, but even then, it's like that's, it's that weird kind of thing that, that you have to be careful when it comes to kids and wives. That's, uh... Kind of that's some touchy, touchy shit. You you really could do that joke if it was like you and I. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean. Yeah, yeah. Like you could, yeah. You yeah, could I do don't that. Think the situation and no. Donald Trump are best. <laughs> I don't think yeah. so. I don't think. I don't think they go to Bahamas. That's a his lot name, right? The situation. <laughs> Mike, the situation. Yeah. I knew a situation Something. or temptation or some shit. Like <laughs> yeah, the situation. The it, although I've always uh, the situation sounds like what you call it when you get herpes, doesn't yeah. it? Like, <laughs> girl. We have a situation. That's why he's taking all those steroids. Yeah, it's the counteract. situation. Oh, my God. The situation just gave me the situation. Yeah. <laughs> I got a situation from the situation. Oh, my God. What a terrible situation. I know. <laughs> or, or in my day, the situation was when you called your friend up at 4 a.m. and you needed help burying a hooker. Dude, that, I've, that was the I've been to the emergency room twice over herpes scares. That's a true fact. Over herpes scares? Now, how does that work? Yeah, let's, this, let's go. Why there. are you going to an emergency room over a scare? But go ahead. I, I'm curious about this. Started dating this chick. Uh-huh. We were not using condoms. We were pretty much... It was exclusive at this point. I mean, we didn't say anything, but she was over all the time. Mm -hmm. Um, She's out one night, and I look down at my dick, and there it is, this, like, bump. And I'm like, oh, 
fuck. Wow, that's nutty. <laughs> Two in the morning, and I'm like, what do I do? You ought to be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> and I'm like, I got to find out now. And there's only one place you can go at two in the morning to find out I've now. I've fallen, and I can't get up! So I hit my life alert bracelet. <laughs> 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 and they came. No. I just went to the emergency room. I'm like, I, I don't care if it's a hundred bucks. I'm going to find out what the hell this is. I see you shiver with anticipation. So what was it? Nothing? It was like a, uh, she said it's kind of like a zit, like a bacterial, tiny little bacterial infection. But I and this know. happened twice in your life, and you ran to the hospital yeah, and said, tell me about this zit on my dick. Yeah. Huh, maybe uh, maybe yeah. Brian's got something going yeah. on. He's got, he's got zits <laughs> on his dick. I don't know. I think the first time it was it like happens. I was shaving. It happens with yeah, it happens with aggressive rubbing or the yeah. shaving situation. I had another scare. My mom's dog came up to me and licked <laughs> me right in the mouth. Ah! <laughs> Boom. All of a sudden oh. it was like numb oh. and like it was really weird. I was like, <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> the bitch must die. <laughs> hope they burn in hell. Oh man. Yeah. <laughs> And so, the, is it, it the dog have herpes, oral herpes, or you just don't like dogs licking your mouth? Uh, probably. That's yeah. probably what I say. Let's go with that. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. So you got a you got a woman now over there or what? Um, no. <laughs> like right now, no. It's just me. Hey, I mean, yeah, I mean, like, he's like, hold on. Let me let me pull her out the pocket. This is little pocket Pollyanna. <laughs> She all strokes your dick like this. <laughs> if it's good enough. She's like riding up and down just with her tongue out. And like, that's not doing anything for me. You just use her and she's like, ah. Anyway. Yes. Yeah. Mitch, Mitch breaks out into these demonic sex <laughs> rants. <laughs> <laughs> My mind wanders when I think about pocket bitches. I had a whole rant about pocket bitches I wrote once. I've never done it on stage. but uh, I had a cartoon when I was in like high school. I used to draw. It was called Dick Man. It was like this big one-eyed monster with a huge dick, and like females would be like all over his dick, like you were just describing, kind of like. <laughs> nice. so did, he like use him, did he use him to jerk off with? Yeah, like no. he used one as a condom for another one. It's like they were, she was like dead on his dick. It was like gross. Nice. Shit like that. Yeah, it's yeah. like guar. Uh, yeah. It sounds like a guar song. Baby um, dick fuck. You ever heard that one? Single. Is the You're single. Yeah, Officially yeah. single. Officially single. Yeah. All right. That's good. Good. I always like to ask this of people, you know, when they're on the show. Yep. Sometimes they go, ah, let's not talk about that. And you got to move on. Yeah. You know. Yeah, then we go, oh, we'll definitely not have you back. Do you have a uh, <laughs> lot of female friends that you uh, have not had sex with? No. 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 See? No. This no. doesn't work, right? It doesn't work. Yeah. I mean, I, I'd probably rather be doing other things. Yeah. I don't want to be, I'm not saying females aren't nice and fun to be around. Sure. No. But there are females that you can do be the same banging. thing with and try. To uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, okay, again, you get it out the way, get the curiosity sated, and then you're good. Yeah. yeah. You know? I mean, unless they, you know, they got a long time boyfriend, they're married, something yeah. like this. I'm friends with a couple of exes that I'm cousin. completely great friends with, and it's not like. But that's because you've been past that. Yeah. 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 So there's no friend. But even if something you, came you up, you have any you female friends be. not in a relationship that you have, you've never had sex not, with? Not ones that I hang out one on one with. Okay. Uh, yeah, there might be someone at the office. That you're, you know, you yeah, see them all the sure, time, but sure. like, I'm not going to dinner with her. Yeah. Yeah. Don't don't dip the pink in the, uh, the uh, company. Uh, the what pen, is it? The, the pen in the, the company. Pen, ink. Yeah. Yeah. Don't pink in the face things. <laughs> don't pink on the goddamn women pens. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the femme pen is not for pinking. <laughs> More don't rum you know for this man. More rum. <laughs> <laughs> this man here. Ah, uh, good times. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I have uh, most of the ones I can think of are like married and such. And then, you know, there's I do a lot of online dating. So, I mean, there's girls that I have. <laughs> I don't know why that's so funny. <laughs> Dude, I revolutionized that shit. I started in AOL chat rooms. Okay? Yeah, yeah. So oh, my God. Yeah. High that. five on that one, motherfucker. <laughs> shit. Yeah. Yeah. No. Uh, Go to the SoCal 25 okay, to 35 room. <laughs> OK Cupid is what I use these days. I like it. It's a good yeah, site. It's, it's all right. So, I mean, there's I a couple right of girls on there where it's like I've hung out. We've gone on like what you might consider a date, but nothing happened. That's right. But I don't really hang friends. out with them regularly or anything. I, in fact, ever again. Yeah, right, right. That's right. <laughs> What's talk to the your point? Friends. What's that? Julie. That's where I talked to her. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's yeah. right. She she was only on there for like a month. Do you want more? So. No, I'm good, dude. Thanks. Good times. What about you, Justin? You ever do the online dating? Never. What was so funny when I said I did it? I just... 
I don't like, know. Apparently, man. something's hilarious about it. I so don't I'm know, like, don't leave me out of a good joke, motherfucker. Oh, when I was, I was ten just years th- ago. That's everyone's uh, reaction. Yeah, yeah. Like, what the? No, fuck? I'm just thinking because I saw we just saw the pictures that you posted. I'm thinking I can just imagine the girl because the girl that you want is not. She's like, he scares me, and I'm wondering the girls that go <laughs> out with you based on those pictures. <laughs> to, be, to be fair, they're like, please take my soul. To be fair, that's a proximity infatuation. That's uh, <laughs> that was over as soon as she said I was scary. I'm like, all right, we're done. <laughs> we're done. Is she hot? Yeah, she's very attractive, very attractive. Um, But, you know, clearly, like, uh, polar opposites. And, again, it's like, if that picture scares you, we can't hang. Yeah. That girl is not going to lay her head off the edge of the bed and let me fuck her in the throat, right? right? (laughs) Like, that's not happening with her. She's going to be like, ah, yeah, see, now you're, mm." Mm. you know what I mean? Like, I I like a dirty bitch, you know? And, again, litmus test I don't think we have the right chemistry or compatibility if I can't pile drive your throat (laughs) once in a while. (laughs) Yeah. It's out of my bed. I mean, right? Let's be fair here. I need you to stay on the floor, (laughs) and I need to windmill you. Basically, I stick my penis in your mouth and do a, you know, 360. Don't mind the four belts on your arms and legs (laughs) that are holding you down. That's going to help you. I can't be with someone who goes her name that way. You're going to use that Adam Carolla soundbite for the rest <laughs> of the time. Yeah. I don't like the aggressive piercings. <laughs> and the crazy spelling of the name either. Aggressive piercings. <laughs> I just love that aggressive. Pier- I, are, are my piercings aggressive? Well, they're kind of. Oh, they're they're like, kind of like. Oh, we're coming for you. They are. Yeah, they're they're that's what you were them. thinking when you got them. I'm sure. Like, I I just. I'm gonna put um, two spikes at the arch. I had a, I had a one in the middle, so I just wanted like three cool ass spikes coming. I just thought it would look neat. Three little like ball things aren't quite as exciting as spikes. I, yeah. I certainly don't. I don't think i'm intimidating in any way um and certainly i don't think my piercings like add to an intimidation or you know anything like that i don't think i go up to people you know i i i do have intimidating eyebrows i will grant you that i've heard that I but think uh, i'm not so I'm, let's I'm a diminutive individual situate I'm them with six the... one i'm 160 or so well i think people kind of worry that you're gonna go around and try to poison people before they think you're gonna suck them sock them in the face i'm just saying like the loud, the loud comic guy who makes that kind of joke on stage nightly doesn't do that. You know what I'm saying? It's the guy who like shies. The the guy. If I looked like this and talked like Jim Jaff- Gaffigan, that's when you fucking worry. I'm sorry. I'm you know saying, what I'm people saying? That walk by you, they don't even hear you talk. They don't know you do comedy. Yeah, yeah. Those people are like, oh, that's watch fair. out for that dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You think so? Well, this is the thing that I've always said is like, I would think a pierced and tattooed individual is the safest person on earth. Because when it comes time to file that fucking police report, that's some pretty detailed information. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Was it the what did he look like? Well, he had a he was six foot one. He had a mohawk, two spikes sticking out of his eyebrow, double zero gauge plugs in his ear, <laughs> four nipple piercings, a tattoo of a fetus on his chest, a scorpion on his left wrist. And a party, like you know what I'm saying? And a pear tree. <laughs> and a spike. <laughs> and a <laughs> But yes. um, bum, bum, and yeah. a spike running through his big dude. <laughs> yes, <laughs> not a spike that hurts. But yes, a <laughs> ring uh, all the same. But you know, yes, exactly. It's it's th- that that's too easy to get caught if you're if if you st- if you're trying to be like a career criminal, you want to blend the fuck in. You want to you know normal hair. That's you know not what, what I mean? people are thinking when they walk by you, though. They're just they don't well, think then like, they're dumb. Then let me not think about like can I spot them in a lineup? They're thinking this is the guy who wants to put some girl's throat but they think she's dead on your bed but how often when you look at like <laughs> <laughs> when you see the fucking i watch a lot of those serial killer shows what does the guy ever look like me no he looks like they're very mid-age. like they look more like you and justin no offense but they do they very like, nat, yeah. you know normal clean like cut. jeffrey dahmer looked very normal just hey how's it going all right like to eat people why are you doing <laughs> pick up the paper but, the, but they still have that it's hard to explain what i'm about to say here but when you look at one of those means. guys like these older middle-aged dudes yeah, yeah. that look like they're wearing the button-down shirt, yeah, yeah. like J- Jeffrey Dahmer. You could look at them, and maybe it's because of the fact that they've all looked like that. Now those types innocuous. of people, they you're like that looks like a serial killer, dude. Even though he looks like just something like a dad, like the, a strange-looking dad. Like when I see like Richie the Sea, you know who he is? He's a comic. Oh. He's got these big, thick glasses. He's just like, right, right. oh, the serial killer. Right. Well, that, that is what I'm saying. That's what I would think. I, I, I don't look at a Pierce guy and go like, yeah, guys. Because, again, way too easy to pick out of a lineup, way too easy to describe to the cops if you go running and shit. It's pretty, I fucking stick out like a sore goddamn thumb. No, it's true. But every person that looks at you has a different thought. And it's usually something like, 
He drinks blood. <laughs> he wants to bang a pig. <laughs> He's going to go to a goth party tonight and try to like fuck three guys. Okay, now you're ass. getting out of line. The pig <laughs> fucking. The, other thing. <laughs> the goth party. Come on now. I'm Let's not pigeonhole me. I'm giving everyone's perspective <laughs> out there. You do pigeonholes uh, too? Uh, what is going on? <laughs> I likes to get freaky. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with a dude getting his freak on with a pigeon. Oh, hold on, man. Hold on. I need to, let me just keep that going. Hey, hand me that trash can, man. <laughs> <laughs> just run to it when you're ready. I know, right? Well, There's one right here. It's a little bit closer. A larger trash can, anyway. You want to take some calls or what? I think I'm going. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's uh, let's launch the Skype. Let's uh, see what's going on with the people at home. Hello. People. I have a feeling they're all frightened out of their fucking yeah. minds right now, but you know, whatever. We'll see what's going on. Oh, blank and, uh, page. There we go. Uh, okay, if you're watching the show and you're uh, curious to call in and uh, curious, and, George, and you want to say some stuff to the people, uh, shit, I just signed into the wrong account. Well, yeah, I hate it when that happens. All right, while you're doing that, I gotta go ahead and do it. Yeah, thing. go ahead and clean the. Uh, Yo, 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 boys and girls, I'm entertaining you while they're doing their thing. This is straight riffing. We be straight riffing, y'all. Mm, word. Straight up riffing with, with your straightness. I think you signed off again. No, no, I signed on. Signed uh, I'm on to the right account. So uh, you can give us a call on Skype, S-T-R, the number eight, R-I-F-F-I-N. Of course, we're always taking uh, commentary in the chat room. People have been very quiet tonight. I don't know if they're scared or if they were enthralled. Let's hope they were enthralled. But if you feel like calling at any point in our uh, lengthy, long-winded conversations, uh, feel free to do that. I felt like I had some actual topics I did not get to on the news. Uh, now I need to remember where I put them, and then maybe we'll talk about them. Because... Uh, Fuck the this news. Is, Let's talk is. about Charlie Sheen and his stupid ass. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that fucking guy. Um, let's see. Uh, I was supposed to talk about. Oh, um, hmm. Look at all these movies you have. Yeah, let's see. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, do you do you do you get a lot of like uh. Get a lot of comics kissing your ass now. What are they? Uh, you don't seem like a Pirates of the Caribbean trilogy kind of guy, Mitch. What's up with this? Uh, yeah, that's. Uh, you know what it is. I got the first one. I liked it. Yeah, the all first right. One. I liked the first one. Yeah. I, I didn't. I don't think I saw the second one of the theaters, and then it was out on DVD. I was like, yeah, you know, it's on sale. Just, it I was like, so pick long. it up. And then my roommate got the third one. And he didn't want it, so he gave it to me. Yeah. So uh, I've actually right. I've tried to watch the third one a number of times and uh, hasn't happened. So. They're pretty long movies. And Justin DuBois is back, ready to take calls still. Sometimes comics do kiss my ass, yes. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Because, like, now, you know, when you're when they do the shows, they're like, Brian, how you been? Hey, so let me get you a drink. How you, what's going on with you? Yes, sir. How you doing? Yeah, sometimes. It's not a, it's not a huge thing. They're just... No. Yeah. They're not high up there. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not that high up there. Yeah, yeah. It they works, just, it works. You know, I just try to filter out who's bullshitting me and... Yeah. Figure out what's going on with each of these comics. There's over a thousand on there now. Jesus. Yeah, so you, 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 a, you do it like a bunch of you, you look over a, a given person's track record. They say, I'm coming out to the Love It's. I'm bringing 15 people. They show up with three. And then when yeah, they go yeah. to the improv and they go, Look, look, I can get I can get 15 people. You're like, You can bring three. And they say, No, 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 no. This time I can get 20. You're like, All right, so five. Let me Is tell you like what that? you just did. Go ahead. You just tapped on something that I'm kind of. The bringer thing? I feel like. There are a few people in L.A. that people look at, and this is only certain people. Like, I can tell the way you're talking right now. Like, it's normal. You realize we're in L.A. There's a show on every fucking corner. We have to get people in seats. But I know that there are people out there that just can't stand the concept, and it's just like, you know, they'll call it pay to play, or they'll just be pissed that they have that, that they're at a point where they think that they shouldn't have to do that. But that's the way just, it is. I know. It's, <laughs> it's yeah, just yeah. fucked up, because I just know, like, more people hate that aspect of this of this LA comedy game than they, you know, than people that kiss my ass. I'll tell you that right. Well, now. I mean, the people the people that hate that don't understand. It's like you're putting on the show and you have to go ahead, yeah. and fill a show. Right, right, right. Well, what, yeah. what fucks you up is it's the other side of it. Is like, for instance, if I if I'm doing a you know, it's if I'm doing seven minutes at the spotlight, right? right. 
And this is like, no offense, TK, I love the spotlight. It's where I did my DVD, um, my DVD special I did there. So I love the spotlight, but it's like, it's out in Studio City. Not many people have heard of it. Right. And it took me a while to realize that getting people out there was, it was, it was like a fucking mental block. Where it's like, you know, 20 something people would say they were coming out. I wouldn't tell him 20. I'd say, you know, 10 or 12 and like three would show up. And yeah. it was like, what the fuck? And then um, I remember I did a show with the spotlight where I was supposed to get a pretty good number, about 10 or 12 that, you know, were solid. And like one person showed up. Mm -hmm. And uh, about a week later, TK was like, I'm doing an improv show. You haven't done the improv in a while. Come out, you know. And I was like, yeah, it'd be my first show as a single man at the all right, right you know and uh, i thought i'd have about seven or eight people and about 20 showed up yeah it's all about the venue sometimes yeah yeah and it fucked me up because i was like well you know it's that catch 22 i can't get a sh regular shows of the improv unless i'm pulling crowds wherever i go right but i'm not going to pull crowds wherever i go because they, they're only going to go to see me at yeah. the improv and and also Again, seven minutes of spotlight. I'm not going to try as hard to get that as, like, for instance, at Lovett's show. That's that was a it was a good goddamn venue. First time there, I was excited about it. It was a Saturday night. You know what I mean? I hadn't done it in a while. Had all new shit I wanted to try out. I mean, and the audience was killer that night, so it worked out well. And I, I don't remember how many I brought. I don't think I've already got a total, but you know, I, I remember it was. I want to say, you know, 10, 12, something like that. Uh, pretty good, you know, with like a week's notice, you know. Yeah. So th it's that kind of thing. And then oddly, you know, the LA pizza thing, it was like three or four people showed up. And yeah. I was like, oh, no, 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 five, six. I had six come out for the LA pizza. And I, I didn't, I thought one person, there was only one person that I thought was actually going to show up. You know, and it's like, it's that kind of thing where it fucks you up because you don't know how many are going to come out. And then it's the other side of like, like, I don't like doing comedy store gigs because it's so fucking expensive. It's like, you know, 15, 20 bucks to get in, two drink minimum the moment you walk in. Then the parking on Sunset is another 20 bucks. So if you if I invite one single friend, they're out 50 bucks. Yeah. I do yeah. it a little differently at the comedy store, but... Um, How do you roll at the comedy store? I sell comics tickets, as many as they can sell for 60 bucks. Like, you can have 50 tickets if you want, and if you sell them at 5 bucks each, they say $10 on them, and it is $10 at the door. So, I mean, if you can get six people to come out at full price, you made your money back and you can keep selling them. You can make money. Um, well, wait, they say 10 bucks on. Now, if I bring a ticket yeah. and, I, and I don't pay the 10 bucks. Right. Oh, well, that's yeah. a pretty good deal. Yeah, yeah. And if you have like a bunch of people coming, you could totally, you know, clean up. But I think the thing that comics need to understand, I have two comic friends. They're uh, Ocean Glapion yeah. and uh, Julio G, Julio Gonzalez. These guys really concentrate on the marketing. You know, like they have... Uh, email list and they don't do it every week you know like they, yeah, yeah. they they wait and like they they have a huge number of people that are like waiting for their next show right you know get fans and then once you have fans that are actually want to follow you you know do it strategically you know you can't do it every week right like, yeah, that yeah. sort of show i don't either yeah but, you burn uh, out your crowd yeah, yeah you exactly. burn them out but you know if you have a decent list especially you know ones that actually want to come see you you know yeah. You shouldn't have a problem with this. It's it's a promotion show, not a bringer show. Sure, you know, sure. So. Well, again, the other difficulty is it's like I'm going to bring a fuckload more people to see me do 20 minutes yeah. than to see me do eight minutes. Mm -hmm. But it's like, how do you know? Unless you've done enough of the fucking eight minutes where you're bringing people consistently. Yeah. I had this one guy. That's fucked up. He's like, I'm going to have 25 people from out of town. It's, it was uh, Fourth of July weekend. Uh-oh. He's like, we're going to come in a bus and da 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 and zero. Like, <laughs> zero. Thanks, buddy. Did you book him again after that? No. 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 <laughs> I wouldn't either. Yeah. You get an L.A. pizza night. Well, a lot of comics don't understand. It's like, because they, I know a lot of comics are like, oh, bring your show. I don't want to do it. I'm like, what you have to understand is like, you bring people. The other comics bring people. You have an audience. Real yeah. people. Yeah. You yeah. know? Laugh and other people that don't know you, you're going you're gonna to open up your market because everyone is doing their work. It's about teamwork, but people don't understand. They're like, oh, I'll lie mm -hmm. and I'll say I can bring out this many people. Just so I can get on the show. Yeah. And then they complain because there's, what, maybe 10 people in the audience. Well, guess what? You just did a show with other comics just like you. Yeah. You know, that did not. And that's, that, that's, the, that's where you get the convenience <laughs> of, like, uh, you know, your love, it's your comedy store, your improv, is that motherfuckers will show up there regardless. Of course, of course. Like, people, they have no idea who's <laughs> on the ticket. They're like, every Saturday night at 7 o'clock, mm. me and Henry go to the improv to watch the comedians. They don't give a fuck who's on stage. Yeah, I love that. How That's long great. the show is. Yeah. They just they know it's twenty bucks and they yeah. can drink and eat and yeah. watch funny shit happen. Yeah. And and that's like 
and that that's the you know problem with some of the smaller clubs is getting anybody to recognize oh there's a comedy club that I could go to every week to see a show that's a difficulty when you're playing like regular spots at those kinds of clubs because it's like not everybody knows I get a lot of people emailing me back saying I'm way past bringer shows that's what they say yeah, yeah <laughs> ego actually, yeah. yeah but here's the thing <laughs> I've never heard of this person <laughs> if you were past bringer shows you wouldn't be worrying and emailing me in the first place yeah. you know, like yeah. you would be getting booked yeah people would be calling you yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so it's like you know I use two types of people people that can help me fill seats and people that will draw a crowd just because they are known for their comedy. And there's like a lot of comics that have gotten to the point where they just don't think it's possible to get friends out. They don't promote it. And well, they don't try. They've been trying, you know, they've been doing it for years. And that's when they start getting they burn at people yeah. like me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, study was released recently that I think was uh, highly unnecessary. Um, <laughs> OK. This is one of those studies that you hear about and you go, uh, is this from the Department of... Uh, yeah, I fucking already knew that Water shit. and power? This is the Department <laughs> of shit we already knew, but somebody did a study on it anyway. Ah. Women who post lots of photos of themselves on Facebook value appearance and need attention. A study finds. They have a mental desire for attention and just they get that. validation through the yeah <laughs> that's kind of like who did that study how fucking retarded was that guy i have a caring okay hear me out so i just found this thing called the internet <laughs> i think now now hear me out but i think i have a suspicion the girls that, that girls would be doing a lot of that facebooking are just looking for extra attention. Is it just mirrors that look like everyone's taking a picture in the bathroom because it's got a mirror? <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> Jesus. Do not make my bunghole angry. <laughs> I need skippy. Here's an impressive story of a uh, a woman in, uh, let's see, where the hell was she at? Uh, Saskatchewan. Oh, man. This I just is like saying that. My... Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan. In Lake Titicaca. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> as long as we're naming fun places to live. Uh, Pennsylvania. Ah. They found in a woman's vagina. Oh, no. The following items. Oh, God. I want to go. In the there. following quantities. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. This fucking. This is a cavernous broad. When I say the first thing, you're going to think there's no way there's a comma. But there's a comma. Several of them. She's got to be on the next. First off. Here comes the first part of the list. 54 bags of heroin. Wow. 31 empty bags used to package more heroin. Well, they can... Yeah, okay. Eight prescription pills. And $51.22. <laughs> <laughs> in case. I, I Just in case. The 22 cents is what confused me. It's, it's... Why is she putting money up there? It, yeah, it's the money thing, and then it's the cents. Like, why the... You need change up in there? Catch you if you got fifty one bucks and fifty four bags of heroin, do you need two dimes and two pennies? Or Why don't you put the twenty one cents up? Four your nickels ass at and least. two pennies? Yeah, like I mean a quarter maybe. Well if you had Mariska Hargate, they could tell you on Law and Order. They'd be like, No, you know why? We've seen this before. <laughs> because they try to sell the heroin and if they can't that money is for, you know, the bus fare back to wherever they came from, just to make sure. Yeah, because it is exact change only. Yes. <laughs> this, is, this is fair. I had not considered that it is exact change on Greyhound. Yeah. Dun, dun. Greyhound after tax is does come fifty one twenty two. And then Ice T would be like, you know what we gotta do? We gotta find the guys that are making the girls put this up the cooch. I'm sorry, was Damn. that Ice Dice Clay? No, I Ice T. I can't do Ice T. I don't know if I can. <laughs> Why is he God, on Law and Order SVU? I don't, I don't know. I, but he's I can't awesome. do an Ice T either. I was about to do it, and I'm like, I I'll fuck it up. That's it's not gonna work for me. I just, what's fascinating about the story is actually that they did, it's not like they were searching her and shoved a fist up in there and started pulling out. Mm. She just was like, hey, I have things in my pussy. I need to get them out. And she pulled out all the stuff for them. Wow. I feel like, you know, keep it up there a little longer, I think. Maybe you, you might have been able to get away with it. I don't know what she was arrested for in the first place. Um, Look, you know where this happened Walking in very strangely. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, God, I can't imagine. Just this was in Scranton, Pennsylvania, no less. Yeah, I had a girl. To go there. Yeah. You, know, you know when you date a chick, she's just, you know that she's 
damaged really bad, and she just has all sorts of weird shit in her head. Yeah, and yeah. She's a stripper. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, even beyond that. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. like, I remember this one chick, she was just like, I'm like, well, what do you have? You had? She's talking about stuff in her pussy, and I was like, what have you had in your pussy? She's like, I don't know, like a baseball bat, a gang of fingers, a gun, and she just starts going off on this. Nice. Just, yeah, you I'm got like, a number or what? Let's no, pull up. <laughs> I lost that a long time ago. Oh, you son of a bitch, man. Leave me single forever. That is the site. Let me let me fall on national podcast radio <laughs> on the Adam Carolla show and shit. I don't like the aggressive piercings no. and, and the crazy spelling of the name either. Uh, it was just Rhythm an opportunity. Meets. Yeah, I just gotta I gotta throw that out there any chance I get. But uh, no, you know what? Actually, it's it's funny you mentioned the fucked up girls because I have a th- I have a theory or sort of an analogy. I have figured out that Hollywood is. Hollywood is that, like, way too fucked up chick at the party who's like, I'm awesome! And, like, one gross tit is hanging down here. And, like, you can see, like, the five pussy hairs she forgot. To they might even be ass hairs, like, hanging out of, like, a fluorescent pink, like, half-ripped pair of panties. And she's, like, holding a bottle of vodka. Yeah. And, like, she keeps putting cigarette burns in the carpets. And she's like, fuck you, I'm awesome. I'm fucking awesome. And you're like, dude, somebody get, who knows this? Where did she come from? That's like, that's Hollywood as a city. Because it's like you walk down the street and, and Hollywood just loves to celebrate itself. And they have the, they have those like signs, like this whole thing, like we're honoring the, you know, the Walk of Stars 35th anniversary or some shit. And they're like, guess who's going to be there? And it was like all these people showing up to like stand on their stars or some shit. Meanwhile, do you know who fucking cleans the stars? Tuesday morning at 4 o'clock a.m. I know because I've seen him. A fucking uh, uh, quadriplegic cleans that shit. Wow. He wears wheels on his legs and slides along the sidewalk and with his nubs polishes each one of them by hand. Guess what? Not paid by the city to do this. He does it because he got nothing else going on. That's who cleans the Hollywood fucking stars. The sidewalks that are paved with fucking gold. A quadriplegic. Hollywood's just so proud of it. We're going to... 35th anniversary, but God forbid they hire a guy to clean the shit. Anyway, I'm just saying it's that fucked up chick at the party you just mentioned. Wow. Yeah. That Ooh. theory was probably Ooh. as hard to come up with Ooh. as uh, <laughs> chicks on Facebook want attention. That's but, uh, yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Just tearing me down. I will not be using that one ever again. Well, any fucking time, sweetheart. Uh. Jesus. I think Hollywood uh, chicks are fucked up, probably. No, no, I'm not talking about the chicks. Just Hollywood as itself. But uh, <laughs> as an analogy, a, a, a personification, an onomatopoeia, if you get what I'm saying. Whoa, whoa. What? What's up? Nothing. Oh, I thought you were looking at something really fascinating over there. No. Looked like you were. All right, well, good times. What's on your mind there, uh, Brian? What's going on over there? Well, let's see. I could talk about sluts if you want. Oh, again? Do that. Okay, let's talk about <laughs> sluts. Let's talk about sluts. All right, here's my thing. Okay. <laughs> because you mentioned, you know, whatever. <laughs> I do take issue with calling women, as a general rule, sluts. Yeah. Because I feel like there is a huge difference between a girl who likes fucking and a slut. But only women can be sluts. The corollary to that would be the fucking douchebag that just has a lot of money and chicks hang out with him because of that. Right. It's like there are chicks who have no personality, are very stupid, boring, lame, etc. But as soon as they get in that bedroom. Yeah, but they'll, <laughs> but they'll blow you. Yeah, yeah. And so you, you'll talk to them. And it's like okay when guys are sluts. I'm a slut. But no, but that's what I'm saying. Guys can't be sluts because we're like that all the time anyway. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's it's that kind of thing like if you're a sad sack of man and and you're like, you know, and you're kind of gross and shit like that, you're not going out and getting mad pussy. No. You know what I mean? There has to be you substance. Just, yeah, you got to have something there. Yeah. So you can't be a slut. No. Here's the thing. Everybody has some like slut that. in them. Yeah. Girls have the wall in front of them that don't, they don't want to be called a slut. They don't sure. want to they don't want to show off the Because it's misused. I yeah. think it's an abused term. It's fucked up for us. The yeah, best sex yeah. you have is with chicks that don't give a shit about that stuff. That's what, that's why I fuck crazy bitches. Yeah, they don't yeah. care. You're, they are there <laughs> in the crazy. moment. They Here's are not that. thinking one second. Wait, is this gonna make me look? Yeah, like that's exactly. not there. That's not in there. And everything is so hot. Yeah, because a because a crazy bitch is already like she's already given up on the whole like what does society think of me thing, and so she's not gonna be like oh my god why is there balls in my face she's just like oh yeah. Mm-hmm. 
And like, cause she doesn't, cause you could go, you could walk outside and be like, guess what this chick just did with my nuts? And she'd be like, can I get a witness? You know what I mean? Cause she's crazy. That's, I like the crazy girls cause of that. Cause they, they, they're beyond societal judgment. I'm with you there. I'm totally all over that. I just get worried about the herpes when I'm with those chicks. <laughs> sure. That's fair. That's fair. It's fair to be worried about the, about the herpes. Now they're in the moment and I'm not. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> And you also gotta you gotta worry like you go too crazy and then you get that thing where like suddenly you have a secret roommate you didn't know about, right, 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 showing right. up and you're like, why? Where? I don't. You don't live. You don't live here. Right. That happened to me in Phoenix once. A, that could be scary. It was a girl who who like you're in like Phoenix. I was living in I was living in an apartment with two other people. Roommate by assumption. And this yeah, <laughs> and this chick well, like at the time was having a lot of drug parties and shit. We would do as it for like three four days at a time and wow. shit. And uh, and I just remember this girl kept hanging around, and I was like, I have seen her before. Hmm. And it was like every time we had a party, this girl was just there. It was always like trying to crash out in my bed, and I was like, who knows this girl? Nobody knew her. She just like stayed around, but she blow you. So you know, after a few days, I was like, you need. To, I don't know who you are, but you need to go. We're at the point now where I'm more bored of the blowjobs than I am. Annoyed with you being here, so yeah, <laughs> so you, yeah, yeah. When, as soon as the yeah, scale yeah. tips, it's like yeah. that's it. Oh. Yeah, I'm sorry, they tipped against your favor. Not that good, you know. Yeah. Maybe if you could deep throat once in a while, you'd you'd have a place to stay tonight. But uh, guess what? You need to go. I haven't seen you lie on the your back out. on my bed and put your neck over the side yet. So. Yeah. Well, at the time, <laughs> I slept on a mattress on the floor, so she just that would have been very difficult to maneuver. I don't have I don't a know. waste paper basket at the side of my bed for no reason. <laughs> God damn it, man. It's like my legacy with you. I was for sure, by the way, you were going to bring that up the other oh, night at LA Pizza. I was like, I have a feeling uh, it's going to be like, and this next guy I plan comes in trash it. cans. I plan on saying things like that, and then either I do one of two things. I forget, or I worry that they're going to be like, look, just pull me up as a comic. I don't want to like have this whole thing. I've had comics that have hit me up after a show like, dude. I would have done so much better if you didn't say this when you pulled me. Like they're crazy about certain right, right. things. It's like I think I I could see like look if I had eight minutes I'd be like fuck dude sir because I have to reference that right, and like right, I right. had a tight eight set, but it's like you you get I mean I went way over. <laughs> well, let the world know if I ever bring something up and you do a tangent on that thing, that's not the clock is not running. Really? No. Oh. Of course, if you do ten minutes on that yeah, thing, yeah. Well, it also depends on the venue, right? I mean, yeah. you know, if it's if it's LA Pizza or M Bar or something like that, probably it's okay. But if it's improv, probably not so much. I just got a voicemail from an unknown three two three area code. Oh. Oh. Tell him to call in on Skype. Tell him, tell him to yeah. call straight. Yeah, if anybody uh, if anybody wants to call in on Skype, we are taking Skype calls for the next uh, few minutes. We're almost done with the show here, so uh, we welcome any and all commentary. Um, Let's see what this is. <laughs> Curious to know how in, how insane the night has been oh. uh, for you. Oh, it's it's Dean at the Comedy Store. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. And I just deleted this. Oh, you son of a no, bitch. I'll get it back. There's a way on the iPhone. Deleted messages. Deleted. Well, you I'm know what's deleted. really exciting is when Brian plays with his phone on the air. Yes. I always like that. That's my favorite part of the show, I actually. went an hour and 55 without doing it. Yeah, that's true. Hour okay. fifty. Yeah, yeah. It's all right. Sometimes you gotta you gotta play with the phone. I check the phone all the time. All right. So chat room or Skype, whatever you guys want to do. If you if you're in the chat room, feel free. I think some people are. Uh, Is there anyone in there? I got a, I got. There? I just got a nice hair comment. So that's cool. Um, <laughs> thanks. Probably looks fucked with the headphones, but well, there we go. Yeah. Yeah. Look at, yeah. Look at that badass shit. Yeah. Yeah. I'm scary. <laughs> Apparently. I don't know. I can't be with someone who's buzzer named that way. She didn't say anything about the hair. Let's be fair. Maybe they, uh, maybe they all love the hair. I have no idea. Oh. Why am I just hitting a fucking brick wall with you people? Come on. No. What's going no. on here? You're just groaning at me. Oh. What's going on? Oh. I'm doing my Clint Eastwood. Oh, is that what that is? Oh. Get off my lawn, you fucking bastards. Yeah. Yeah. You know the. As I do a thing. Clint Eastwood taking the bar exam. You ever? I had I had uh, I had made a note to myself the other night on St. Patrick's Day. I was clearly very drunk when I did. Yes, it. and what was the note? The note is talk about that Mexican guy on St. Patty's Day who said white people can get away with that when playing dumb. What? I'm trying to remember what the we had a conversation. We can do whatever we like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't you know who that is? Um, it was. I'll have another Guinness. 
And fuck that cunt over there. I don't remember. <laughs> there was something where I oh he was talking. He was he was he was looking at my phone. I have a jailbroken iPhone, and he was like, "How'd you do that?" And I was like, eh, "It's a fucking geeky shit. I don't want to get into it. Whatever." He's like, "Isn't that illegal?" I was like, "No." And he's like, "What? You know, like, but they won't like restore your phone or whatever." And I was like, "Well, you know, if you have some problem, if it's completely fucking broken and there's no way to turn it on, then you're good." That's what I did. Uh, when I had a jailbroken phone that died, I like waited, I like fucking destroyed it so that it just wouldn't turn on. I said, so then you just play dumb. Then you just go legal like, or is it illegal? It's not illegal. It's against Apple's policies, but yeah, you're not going to get arrested for it. It's I mean, not under warranties, right? So it's like yeah, it's like yeah. You, you basically you void the warranty. It's like taking off the the whatever the on, tag. Yeah, 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 exactly tagging them. Yeah, whatever. So that so I, I was just kind of giving them this drunken rant about like, look, whenever you're not really sure. <laughs> Just, That's not you drunk. Just play dumb. That's not for all of you that are watching. That is not Mitch drunk. When Mitch is drunk, he is very, <laughs> he's very coherent. He's, <laughs> Surprisingly so. Yeah, yeah. No. He no. I, I had to do a drunk impression. Otherwise, it wouldn't sound like. A, anyway, I basically told him, yeah, you just play dumb when you're when you're trying to get away with shit that's. On only the, white people can do on that. On the edge. Yeah, and he's all, <laughs> hey man, only white people. I can't really do it. But he basically, yeah, only white people get away with that. And I was like, I don't. And I, for a moment there, I kind of wanted to be like, well, are you saying that only people only assume that white people are dumb or, <laughs> or are you saying that it takes, I mean, like I, I couldn't really go uh, know where he was going with it. I, I feel like he was trying to, I was like, are you, are you making a racial statement? Like maybe he not was against white maybe, people. No, maybe he was. I think maybe he was trying to make like a, like a, Hey, here's a Hispanic joke. Uh, you know, here's a sort hey, of bro, self-defacing like, joke about Hispanics. And I was like, yeah. I'm not really going to follow you there, but like, like I couldn't I'm go intrigued. to the Grove and tell him like, Hey man, my shit doesn't work. You know, if, if I was there. <laughs> I would have said, look, dude, if I was a cop and I had to choose between the Mexican or the devil looking piercing extreme. There he goes again. I'm the devil now. piercing guy. I go the Mexican. <laughs> Maybe the Mexican guy? I don't know because or, it's or so honest. It? <laughs> I'd be taking, I am the devil. I'd be taking the extreme piercing guy back to jail with the jailbroken phone. Right? Leave the Mexican there. Like, yeah. You know. Yeah, you got enough of those. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean... I'm just saying, if you you know if you're trying to collect or something, you know you're trying to. Uh, don't you get more points if you get the rare? Uh, it's like yeah. hunting elephants or something. I have yeah, no idea. I yeah. could get a bunch of Mexicans. I mean, I guess it depends where you are. This. Yeah, I know. This is a, this is a rare breed up in here. This is crazy. Oh, we'll see here in Hollywood. Shit. Yeah, it's Unless not a big. You're in Hollywood. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Again, I'm all right we're here. We're just kidding. Mitch. I step outside of the lines and we're fucked. Mitch is the you're like the most innocent out of all three of us. Where do you get that idea? Well, you I are. don't get that. How idea. you figure? Because yeah, you're. Well, yeah. define innocent. Curious. Okay, now. okay, maybe not then. I'm just curious. I, maybe I am. I have no. No, idea. I mean you're you're the most. I mean I've had like a checkered past. <laughs> I mean, you know I, I'm yeah I'm I'm relatively above the law these days, but you know you that are. wasn't always the case. Now <laughs> like Steven Seagal. <laughs> I now think I'm you Steven lost some Seagal. credit with him when you jizzed in the trash can. You're yeah, like, who I the think, fuck does that? Yeah, yeah. What a fucking pussy. Just yeah. jizz on her. If she doesn't like it, she'll tell you. You won't do it next yeah, time. Yeah. It's not a... Well... That's a, a, that's one of those... That That's what I did back that's then. It's just one of those it's things. It's not a regular thing I do. That's just because Mitch is clean. Back when I was 31. Yeah, I do have I do have weird like hang ups. Uh not so much even hang ups, just sort of like that temporary paranoia where I'm you know, I, I overthink shit when it yeah, comes to yeah, chicks. Yeah. Uh, Everyone does. again I, I it's like if I'm if I'm on a date and we're on the couch and watching a movie, like it might take me the length of the movie to move that one seat over. That's why I think them. we're more yeah. devious and manipulative oh. than you are. I'm yeah, thinking yeah. to myself, the next time Luke Skywalker comes on the fucking screen, I will have my hand on her somewhere. Yeah, see, like, and you're like, thinking. you're yeah, already I, thinking, oh, I'm worried about you my date. But you also understand, like, we're not. I think it I also depends on your upbringing. <laughs> like, I, you got to see, like, I, I misunderstood signals from women uh, pretty much all the way up through, like, late high school. Hence the piercings. Yeah. Like, I don't... <laughs> that's what I'm saying is, like, My this is the mistake This is the mistake I make is, I'm like... Just kidding. Is, like, with, with that fucking perfect example is that, that Rosen thing is, like... It's like, I wouldn't think there's anything all that weird about my look or whatever have you. So it's just like, hey, it's a dude talking to a chick. I'm an attractive guy. I'm intelligent. I'm funny. I could do this. But uh, not so much because of all this shit going on. And so it's like when, when, you know, when I'm, 
hitting off with a girl and she's like, ee, you know, whatever. And I'm all, all right. But then it's like, no, you freak, you know. Stay. And so growing up, though, that happened a lot where girls were, you know, they were just kind of nice to me. Yeah. Maybe they thought I was gay. I have no idea, but they, they were nice. <laughs> and I was like, oh, me and this girl, we got a thing. Yeah. And uh, no, no. Shot down. In a blaze of glory. Uh, I just assume if she's all of my, my house, life, pretty much. So it's like I, I, yeah. I'm paranoid about that. Sorry, guys. I just assume if she's at my house and we're watching a movie one on one here, yeah. she's thinking the same thing I am. Usually, I'm just of thinking, course. Yeah, so I'm just because like, she's there. Yeah, but yeah, I yeah. gotta make the move. I mean, it's else. it's a fair assumption to make. I'm with you. I'm just saying. If you strike out, you strike out. But you, again, logically, mm-hmm. I get that. I've in, you know, no doubts. I'm just saying, for some reason, in the moment, I'm like, well, maybe. She's thinking, I'm going to lock her up in my dungeon. <laughs> no, nah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or like, I don't know. I, I can't really I can't really quantify what it is in my brain, but there's just a part of me that's like, well, I could probably, you know, go for But I, I, I <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's just weird. It's just some kind of like weird block where it takes me a while to make that first move. And so conveniently, however, uh, uh, most of the time, women make jump on me instead, which I would strongly prefer. And then I, I do, I take after my my snake, my ball python. It's uh, what I do is I put a when I feed her, I put a rat in the tub, you know, and then I put her in the tub, and she doesn't ever go after the rat. She just chills out in the corner. She just sits there, perfectly fucking still, doesn't doesn't move. Just kind of I'm chilling, chilling, chilling. Rat comes up. It's like hey, little buddy. And it'll, like, kiss her on the face. Over. Done. She'll just pick him up, lift him, you know, this whole thing. So I, I, I get it's sort of like that. It's like I'm not going to, you know, but I'll sit there, and if, if the rat gets close, you know. Uh, <laughs> I bet I bet some of these chicks that you, like, date that are fucked up, they're either all into the sex or they're, they have the major walls up, don't they, some of them? What do you mean? Like, you know, like I was saying earlier, like, you know that there's no hang-ups with these crazy chicks sometimes, and, like, sure, the sex sure. is going to be good. Sure. I bet a lot of the crazy ones also, they have the wall, like, the big wall, like, like the like something that'll set them off, like, if you touch their neck, or you grab their hair. Right, you right. Know, sometimes That's you into, too far. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I do feel, again, I do feel like the piercings of the mohawk is a neat litmus <laughs> test insofar as, like, I don't look like the polite boy down the corner you know that's like okay let's you know do you ever get like three ways with these chicks yeah that's happened i got you're talking to the man who's done everything we wanted to do let me tell you (laughs) everything maybe i have a routine (laughs) i think it's pretty close (laughs) depends depends i have a routine about always wanting to have a three-way yeah and i actually had one and i actually it was it took my entire life who are the two other guys (laughs) 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 funny part was high school for me he doesn't want you to know it's them (laughs) No. Okay, go, go, go. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, seriously, I was like, I all I cared about, like, I couldn't get married till I had it. You know, like, yeah, was, yeah, yeah. That's, that's what was in my mind. I'm like, with you. I'm with you. I had my first threesome on six six six. Oh, that's cool. That's that's how I roll. Anyway, go ahead. Wow. Yeah. So I was just <laughs> so many different chicks that I dated. We tried to make it happen. It's hard to make it happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. No, you can't do it with chicks you're dating. It has to be two drunk chicks that know each other at a bar that are back want you best. to hang out yeah. with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's yeah. like. That's how it, it's happened every time I've, I've had like strings attached. four of them and, and all of them went will that be way. Attached, they were all like two drunk <laughs> chicks either at a bar or like a chick at, in her hotel and my friend's coming over later or like so it's it's just do organic. That. I don't do that. Usually. Oh man. That's, that's the problem. Shame. I had to make it happen the, uh, the non-organic. Oh, you're talking really? to the man who went to the emergency room, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> this man. Oh, that's true. You went to the emergency room <laughs> thinking you had herpes. Yeah. So that's probably you're not going to. That's fair. That's fair. Okay. So. I, I just yeah, it's what I that's what I have found. I, that reminds me, I watched the Dustin Diamond sex tape the other day. Was this chick hot? Uh, well, it was. It, it was. It, here's what's. It, it was him and two chicks, and one of them was a bride, like bride to be. It was her bachelorette party. Her and her best bridesmaid, and they like sounds like a lady. Oh, the yeah, 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 it was, it was yeah, really like it, it was weird. It, it, it's so fucking obnoxious, that dude. And he's you were just so like, obnoxious. oh my god, with the camera, and he's like, dude, dude, and he. He was convinced that he had the world's largest penis. And I, the same problem I have with the Tommy Lee sex tape. I don't think I'm like, is the, is the fucking angle weird? Because, I, you know, I've watched a lot of porn. I can, I can <laughs> yeah, spot. Yeah, that Tommy Lee is not anything I can, Yeah, I can spot some dick sizes. I can, si- you know, and Screech's dick, for all that he <laughs> fucking talked about, he kept calling it the beast and the monster and all this shit and, like, look how big it is. And I was like, 
you know, maybe it's the angle, dude, but it's not. It looked like it was swinging maybe six, and it wasn't. It didn't look like, you know, fucking baby's arm thick. It was, you know, it looked like a, he had a big head. I mean, the head of it was like, you know, like like this bulbous thing, but the rest of it was like this. Maybe he was bragging about the head. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. But the chick seemed impressed with it, and I was like, hey, my kind of girl. Like, that, they're happy with that shit. You know, I'm, any, I'm not annoying. How's that? If any ladies would like to meet Shaquille after the show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So no. I, I don't know. It, it fucked it. I got, it took me out of it when I was like, this chick's getting married tomorrow. And it just sort of it hurt my. It, I, I, I don't want to get moral with That's my porno. That's the kind of chick that has a three way with Screech. Yeah. The I mean, chick who's getting married the next yeah. day. But then you think, That's like, how I, fucked up she I'm is. thinking, like, like uh, how. I don't know how drunk she'd have to be to not only fuck Screech uh, or, uh, the night before her wedding, which is bad enough. But she knew he was taping it. He had a camera in her face the whole fucking time. Yeah. Like, and he kept like, look, guys, what I'm getting on the camera. I mean, the whole time. Like, it was like a two-hour fucking film. She probably was still was like thinking that cuts. she knew Zach. I, maybe, but yeah, even still, like, you know. I, I just know. feel like it just seemed weird to me, and I just—I mean, it was—it's uh, really hard Sorry for, for somebody holding a camera to to narrate something and not sound like a douche. But he wasn't making a case for disproving that theory. Let's put it that way. He was everything's dude this and oh check this shit, you know. And it was just you know, and I talk all this smack, but whatever. He banged two chicks in a hotel room, you know. Because they wanted to meet him, so but that you know they're only banging him because he's screech. If he wasn't screech, they would never touch this guy, mm -hmm. right? I mean, mm -hmm. that's safe to say. And I think it's probably not that easy for him to pull off on a daily basis. Either. I don't think this so. This was like a, he found the that's right why he had a video tape the event chicks at the right fucked up time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair to say. Yeah. But again, that's one of those organic things. You yeah. know what I mean? It was these two chicks hanging out in a hotel room, and they were like screeches. You know, they saw him in the lobby or something, yeah. inviting them up. The reason this came up, by the way, is because it was so inorganic. We planned it. She oh, found the girl. Man. We made it. It was a. We made a whole. But was it still sexy? Was it hot? Once we got there, but I yeah. had to make a move on two chicks while we're watching TV. Oh basically. man. Yeah. Oh, that's rough. Yeah. I don't know if I could do that. There was yeah. a whole negotiation to this, by the way. It involved a ferret. I had to go get a ferret in Vegas for this girl. <laughs> from from was Vegas. This is Richard Gear. Now wait. <laughs> it wasn't involved in. The now what? How does a Vegas <laughs> ferret? Differ from a Los Angeles ferret. Is there a They're different... illegal here. Oh, well, that's true. Part I of the guess... deal was I had to go get this ferret oh, for her, okay. and she'll make a three-way happen. So you're I, not even. I thought you were fucking. I thought you were riffing. You're no, serious. No, you no, had to no, go. No, yeah, I had to. Get, there was a whole negotiation process. Wow. She had to name the. Ferret I now have the name of band. your. I now have the name of your first album. Wow. A ferret for a threesome. A ferret for a threesome. That's, that's it. That's there's the name of your first ferret album. For a a ferret for a threesome. Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. No, I I. Uh, uh, the first two times was this girl I knew who just she had all these girlfriends that she wanted to fuck with, you know, but Perfect. like, but they were all like not lesbian or whatever. So she'd get them super drunk and then bring me over, and then she'd just start blowing me like right in front of them. And they were like, "Hey, were they uncomfortable? Did it? No, ever? no, they they just get right up. And they talked about it before you got. I'm there. sure, yeah. I'm sure, but it seemed it seemed genuine. It was, you know, it was it was weird because I remember I was the, the first I was over there, and it was like. And the one girl, I'd hung out with her before. We never did anything. And she was like, oh, come over tonight, you know. And uh, she brought me over there. And her and her friend were hanging out. And we were all drinking and just, you know, whatever. Kicking it, whatever. And then the one girl gets up. And she starts, like, giving me a shoulder rub or something. I was like, ah, that's pretty good, you know, whatever. So she kind of, like, reaches her hand down and starts grabbing my crotch or whatever. And her friend goes, like... She goes, I don't know what's going on over there. You know, I don't want to. You know, it was like kind of. That's like, the kind of thing. Is, like you're like, oh, this shit. is awkward. You're now, like, is it going to happen? Is it not going to happen? Is yeah. it going to happen? Yeah. I was like, I was like, uh oh, I don't know what. I, and I was kind of thinking like, well, then don't pull my dick out or anything. This girl's clearly upset by this whole thing. And then, then her friend just walks over and she goes, gosh, if you're not going to do it, and just starts blowing me. And I was like, this is great. I've never met this girl, and I've only hung out with this girl once awesome. in a very public place, and nothing. It's more flattering it that wonderful. they planned it out than yeah. that it happened naturally because they, you know, she's like, "Yeah, bring him over. Let's do this." Yeah, thing. yeah. And I, I had the foresight oh, sure. that night. I, I, I took care of business a few minutes before I left, and she lived down the road. Um, took care so of business. So I got to, you jerked off. Yeah, Pooped jerked yeah, off in the, the trash basket. can. Yeah, went into the trash <laughs> can. <laughs> and I was like, well, "What's convenient about that is because I, I was thinking to myself, like, I don't know." my dick that well i might show up and i'll be like look dick it's two women and he'll just be like 
you know, and I, I don't want that. <laughs> <That's> ah. <laughs> hey, guys. <laughs> Who and, is your uh, dad, dude? Nice what to meet you. <laughs> and I'm out of here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. You guys are so hot. Oh, Get to I the know. chopper. So uh, <laughs> I didn't want that to happen. And and it just conveniently, because I had just jerked off prior to going over there, and they, they got me in the refractory period. So I've noticed if you get it if you get it hard, like, before that, then it'll stay for, like, an hour. And so I got to sit there, and I was sober. I was trying. I was like, man, I'm a, I kept thinking of all the shit I wanted to do in a threesome, and then I was just doing it. And it was, like, really, it was cool. I was like, oh, you know what? I should try this. I should maybe try this and have her do this while I'm doing this. Oh, it was wonderful. I have so, so many uh, stories of good. attempts at three ways, by the way. But uh, again, it has to happen organically. I know. That's the. Uh, it's just I could write a book about my attempts. It's crazy. <laughs> Brian Monarch. The things that the, the search for a threesome. Yeah. Ah, but at least you had one, so that counts for anything. Justin, you had no, three way. Yeah. You got that. I hate don't to say feel no. bad. If, don't I, feel bad if you haven't. I mean, I'm just. I hate to say like no comment, years. but yeah, I've, I've had. But it was with my buddy, dude. Uh, all right. It was my buddy. I used to uh, do that shit in high school all the time. I get my friends late. But no, no, no. It was me, my buddy, and this girl that we met at a bar, and then she was like, "Yeah, you want to come back?" I go, I go to Caltech, and we're like, "Fuck!" And he was like, "You talk to her." You well, have I mentioned talk. this girl before. Yeah. All right, good. So we're at a bar and. Um, I don't want to say the the city, but it was in <coughs> Tadina, and um, <laughs> and we were at this bar. Al, perhaps. Uh, anyway, no, it starts with the P. Okay. <laughs> Past Tadina. Uh, yeah, Past there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Adina, yeah, and um, we were uh, we no we just so no went. so no two chicks on you, huh? No, no two chicks, man. And it turned out uh, it it was weird because. We got it on. We did this whole thing, and it was kind of like your finger cuffs or what? Like it you was, were on one end, he it, was on the other, or it was yeah, but it was. Or did, <laughs> you, or did he go ass and you went vag? No, we were. <laughs> were your balls bumping yeah, together? Yeah, uh, the, yeah, yeah but, I would. I don't know that I would do the ass vag thing because, like, I wouldn't want to take the ass for first off, um, and then secondly, I mean, no, it wasn't. You know, it wasn't like that. There was no. There was no double of, penetration as far as um, the ass and. and although uh, I have heard you can feel the other dude through the, you know. Through the walls, and I feel like that'd be interesting to say the least. There was none of that, but what there was was the you know like, hey, he's facing me, high five. Yeah, yeah. Because she's on all fours, kind yeah, of a thing. Yeah. And then the finger cuffs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And mm. and it just ended up being like, we're like, I can't believe we just did that. And we're like, yeah, I can't believe it either. <laughs> he's oh like, my I, I, God. let's never talk about this until we're on a podcast. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, we, we we won't consider it DP since we're in the same hole. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, no. You can't really penetrate. Exactly. I don't know. Fucking the mouth is that penetrate? I don't know if that counts as penetration. I think you had to get past that. And then no, no, no. no, I just it, I just felt like I was in a whorehouse. That's all it was. All right. She's like, "Are you ready?" And I'm like, "Where are you from? Oh, Eastern so she, Block?" Oh wow, <laughs> yeah, that's my kind of girl. But you got her was, number uh, or what? Uh, actually, I don't. I don't. Why don't even... you fuckers hook a brother up? I mean, shit, all this talk. Pansies. You don't want the psycho. No, I, I don't. About. <laughs> you don't know Mitch. <laughs> <laughs> He likes the psychos. The, the, the Braved Six Cave. No, uh, I mean, uh, you know, I, I haven't I haven't really set up the cave very well. I still need to get my, my lighting fixed and uh, install my uh, my bondage ring on the wall and such, you know. I'm waiting for the fucking... It's hard to tie them up when you got no headboards. I usually hang a ring on the wall. Seat, it's the like one a that hangs point from ring. the wall. That you gotta... Yeah. Can you do that? There's be I see a beam right there. Yeah, you can yeah. probably... And yeah. then just hang a That's seat. not a beam, sir. That's a uh, fire extinguisher. No, no. Thingy. I'm looking. I'm looking at the roof. I could see. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying. You could do uh, it. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I I could. There's, I could do it in the bedroom. I don't know. I, I feel like I don't need a... I, I'm, I, it probably sounds fucked up, but we're about ready to end this. But, uh, All right. But it's like... Uh, no, nah, I like uh, I like just tying them up. Blindfolds, uh, Wartenberg wheel, spanking, slapping. You know. Yeah. Any requests, send them to roofing.net. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, <laughs> the good stuff. You know. <laughs> Save it for the second date, usually. Yeah. The the weirdest thing, I guess, probably, and some people think I'm immensely fucked up for this, but I thought this was killer. Um, and the girl liked it a lot. She was an ex. Um, was it? I had a, a, a I I tied her up and then I blindfolded her, and then I put my scorpion on her chest. Uh oh. She was allergic to bee stings, so I said. Uh, and this is true, is a scientific thing. With the emperor scorpion, their sting is the same venom as, as a bee sting. And I said, if you move too fast, it might sting you, and you, you got about a half hour if that happens. So don't, don't wiggle. She's like, 
the wiggle doing what? And then I just dropped it on her. Yeah. And she was like, is that is that your scorpion? I was like, yeah. And she didn't fucking move an inch. Wow. Yeah, then I went down on her. It was a good time. And when that scorpion died, she kept it in her freezer and cried about it. She was she was very bonded to that scorpion. First scorpion she ever had a three way with. Yeah. Wow. It's a good thing. Special. That was a fun time. It's a fun time. Yeah. And you know, Mitch is gonna get a little older. He'd be like, pull out rattlesnake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, is. yeah. Sure. He's, he's I got, got I got a snake. Yeah, yeah, he's got stuff here. But I mean, you know, I don't want to. <laughs> it's not the scare. A ball python on you isn't so. Uh, scorpions feel cool because they have they have uh, several claws at the end of each one of their feet, and they have eight of those. So it's these. It's this very interesting feeling, very similar to Wartenberg, but it's alive and it just keeps crawling. And what's fucked up nah. is like it got to right about here, and I lifted the blindfold and. Shh, she was. Uh, she just was. Uh, I'd never seen anybody shake like that before in my life. It was. It was fascinating. So uh, yeah, it's just kind of interesting. I was like, uh, Did she ever come back uh, for seconds? Of course. We dated for three years. Oh, yeah. I know this yeah. girl. Yeah. <laughs> Look, I had some fun. I had to test that girl out. I really ran her through her paces for about two years. Wow. I ran her through a bunch of different shit. Like, I always wanted to try this. I wonder if she'd go for it. Like doing all this stuff, and then I was like, okay, now we can date. Hi, honey. I brought home a black mamba tonight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that's why it's like after two years of like all that, I was like, okay, now we can be exclusive. I think she was like, fuck you, and like <laughs> left me. <laughs> yeah. And then and then to get to when, she, when, when we were like, maybe we're going to get back together, I said, look, I don't think I could ever get back together with you. And she had, uh, this is rather personal, but it's, yeah, maybe I shouldn't. Herpes? It's, uh, no, no. What I did was, um, I said, I said, look, I, I can't really trust you to just, you know, if, if you just come back, I feel like you're just gonna, it's because you're lonely, and I don't want to be your fucking. This dude didn't like you as much as you thought, and you're coming back to me. I don't want to be your fucking second in line. You don't want. So I need you to like, I need you to humiliate yourself. And so I said, you need to show up because uh, she she had left her fiance for me. I said, you need to show up in the wedding dress. You were gonna, you need to come to the door in the wedding dress. Otherwise, it's a no go, and she did so. Kudos. You've got quite the architected neural thing going on up there. Yeah, don't you? yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I've got that I, worship thing. You know, they, I need to, I need lots of worship, and otherwise, it's like, eh. It's Come not, in your wedding dress working. with two black mambas, and I'll take you back. Yeah, yeah. Get a scorpion in each hand, mamba wrapped around, and we're good. So it worked out. You know, right. yeah, it's fun. Fuck it. <laughs> but then that's why I don't date you see because I'm all fucked up like that and you know it happens it's like uh, you don't want to um, you got to know what you're good at and, and that's relationships I'm not so good at alright plugs what do you got to plug there Brian freecomedyshows.com freecomedyshows.com that's it freecomedyshows.com if you're a comic go to socalstandup.com there you go yeah, yeah. Uh, Justin you got anything uh, you want to plug I got a thing I'm doing God, I can't fuck. Can you, can you, can you riff for a little bit? I'm just freecomedyshows.com is an awesome <laughs> site where you can go to <laughs> awesome shows, avoid the online door charge. You can see me, charge. Brian, and Justin on the same night for freezies, y'all. Freeze. Yes. I mean, like, imagine that shit. That would blow your fucking mind. We got big names on there, too. Yeah. What? We got Chris Dillia coming up. What's your, what's your next big show? Um. Big head line. Eliza's at the uh, M Bar on Friday. Nice. Okay. I got uh, Chris D'Elia on a comedy store on the 30th. That's cool. a Wednesday night. Cool. Um, that's about it right now. We got a couple of Love It shows coming up, but I haven't really booked headlines. We got to go to that Eliza show, Justin, and get her to come on the podcast. I would love that. We that would be that. awesome. That'd be fun. Yeah. You, you won't Sessinger. be the first person that's used me for Eliza. <laughs> this guy, this will be a good story, real quick. Go ahead. This guy, you know how, like, we do comedy, and sometimes sure. we ask the headline, and we're like, oh, cool, it's a bar gig, yeah. whatever, you yeah, know? Yeah. He calls me up, he's like, hey, dude, what's up? I'm like, hey, how you doing? It's another comic. He's like, hey, I'm doing this cool show. It's our one year anniversary, or our three year anniversary of this show. We need a headliner. I'm thinking, all right. He's like, you know Eliza, right? Oh, <laughs> snap. <laughs> And I'm to be like, fair, I would just go to the show anyway. Well, yeah, he knew she he was on my sh comedy yeah, store yeah, show yeah, that yeah. month, so she he came yeah. that night. And I hear you, I hear you. To her, I was just thinking, like, oh, all right, now they finally realize right, that right. Eliza's good. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. No, I mean, I, I got to get a lot. Of, I want to get a lot more, um, you know, there's a, there's a lot of 
bigger name comics that I want. I have questions for. Yeah. I have mucho question. Me too. Yeah, uh, much much to be discussed. Justin, do you have your plug ready? Because we're about ready to get out of yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. So I'm doing a show this Friday. It's uh, it's for uh, Japan relief. Really problem. Some, something happened in Japan. Apparently, yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't yeah. know. Maybe you should call the Gilbert Godfrey impressions. Yeah. I don't know, but there's always one floating around. Oh, the world oh, gives oh, a oh, shit. Oh, man. Doesn't matter. Oh, that Not was that that's what, isn't that what he said? I don't know. What he, is that what he say? At no, least, I, I give my reference that when I, I did his uh, when I did Gilbert Godfrey impression on stage the other night. I referenced the jokes, but I didn't Godfrey. tell Let's the jokes. About Charlie it's Sheen. horrible. It's horrible. <laughs> Let me tell you about Charlie Sheen. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm doing a show. Um, it's a uh, it's it's a uh, Japan relief show. So all the proceeds go to Japan. Um, word, word. It's on Friday. This Friday from six to eight. Cool. And it's going to be at the Melody Bar and Grill, which is by LAX. So if you want to check it out, just go to Google, look up Melody Bar and Grill. That's where I'm going to be at from 6 to 8. It's going to be some great comics. So come on out. It's a free show. What, and what night is this again? Friday night. This Friday. This Friday from 6 to 8. You can also uh, check justindubway.com. Yeah, D A B U E T. Yeah. Left corner there. Yeah. yeah. If you're curious how that's spelled. Yeah. And there's Brian Monarch.com. Brian Monarch. Yes. M O N A R C H. Right. And uh, RevMitch.com, R-E-V-M-I-T-C-Z. RevMitz. All right. <laughs> and I think we out of here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Trying to queue up the uh, the outro. <laughs> All right. Good night, everybody. We'll be back next week. And I'll be back on Thursday with Our Salvation. Uh, the close friend of mine, uh, Anthony. Be a good show. Thank you guys and good night. Good.